The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this light go. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. To the podcast on Haunted Hill, episode 130. I am Gav. I'm Dan. Uh, welcome. Welcome. This is a special episode because it's the first episode of 2023. So, mm-hmm. Happy New Year to you, Gav, and to all our beautiful listeners. listeners. Yep. Um, and it's also a special one because, as is tradition, with the first episode of the year and your birthday being so close mm-hmm. to to you know that time, yep. Yep. it's your birthday episode. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I will cry if I want to, and Fifty Cent will sing for me while he I will. while I cry. He will sing for you. Um, happy birthday to you, my friend. Thank you very much, man. As I you... am now over the hill. I've caught the hill last year let's say let's say you live to 90 that's, that's a fairly all right age come on 90 45 then to half eight that must be the peak of the hill so being over the hill i am now 46 i've started like going down i'm on my skateboard it's all right but i'm you know i'm on the downward slope to death, creeping basically. creeping towards the big five o. I'm, I'm creeping towards never being here in this existence of this world ever again because i'll be dead well your energy will i believe yeah, 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 yeah. You know, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. Still very atheist things, but you know, that's a I whole different thing. Energy, that is a different thing. That's We're not totally here to different thing. That. I'm not going to start going there. No. Well, uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Got boys, boils, ghouls, uh, ghouls. Uh, <laughs> non-gendered people, aliens, everything else. Indeed, uh, welcome. Um, if this is your first time, Dan and I like to talk about a couple of movies. We have a little, have a little section we do, and we, we put a bit of humour in there and a few tangents and things and stuff like that. It's very exciting this episode as well because, I well, picked... first of all, yep. yes, first of all, let's say so for anyone that doesn't know, when it's the host's uh, mine or Gab's birthday episode, they the host gets to pick the films. You know, um, not that we don't pick them anyway, but you know specifically. Yeah, this is like literally that one host chooses both those. Films. Like, I like yeah. these films for this reason, sort of thing. Same as what we do with the patrons. If you become a patron to the podcast on the Haunted Hill, um, you get this every once in a while on a, a rolling rotation. So, Gab, you've chosen... Weirdly, there is a theme between the two films you've chosen for us. So for this episode, Gab, please tell us what films we are reviewing. Uh, we're doing Horror Express and uh, The Relic. Now, um, both of these films um, I do have fondness for, and they are both kind of creature flicks, um, but it's mainly like creatures being transported to a destination, and... Um, what could go wrong if they're like creatures from well we're just we'll find out and they kind of they're also creatures that tend to infect their a host as well the horror express was to review the horror express i watched it in a different light totally just sitting there going wow this is amazing this is better than i thought it was watching it like because when you have to review a film you kind of really watching everything because it's like what's the point of conversation etc etc so then just seeing certain things like just the white eyes but really look at the white eyes the bleeding blood coming down the eye just underneath the eyes and stuff it's just like visually it's like so good and the uh, idea um, of it and and the beautiful cane test of course which we'll talk about um and, and relic and relic a, a, a fondness yeah. for this and it unfortunately got uh, shrouded in the um height of scream coming out a year before it um it got kind of just push aside even though it's got quite a big production to this movie like the the museum is shot in <clears throat> at a cost of a million they paid a million just to shoot there you know it's a good, direct, it's like a good director as well um so uh, it's yeah it's, it's uh he he shot it as well which is quite interesting he was a cameraman as well so between these two films we're talking about some classy actors we're going to be talking about christopher lee peter cushion we're going to talk about pete telly savalas 
And Tom Sizemore. <laughs> and Tom Sizemore. And uh, not discussing his porn video, which I've never seen. Or his fake penis that he used when he went to do a drug test. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he had a fake penis and they caught him because he must have bought a piss thing, so from somebody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because he was still doing drugs. <laughs> got this fake penis out because you need to do it in front of you know your parole officer so, and they were like hang on a minute tom that looks like a different is that fr- hang on it's tom we've like- seen your cock on that video <laughs> i don't know why it sounded a bit like michael Caine. tom we've seen your cock on the video we've seen your cock tom we've seen uh, your cock yeah so neck is down alan that is the two films we're reviewing we so, also yeah. obviously have world of the strange a slight twist because it's gav's birthday he is this is dan's idea Presenting me, if it goes wrong, with the, the stories for what are the strange, and I hear there's three. So I'm, I'm presenting myself to Daniel. Uh, well, as always, so I'm very excited about that. The biggest thing, though, the very exciting thing, Gav, it's me you don't know, myself. you don't know about this, Gav, what? is it's the first film, first uh, episode of the year. That means it's time for me to dust off the time machine. Oh, jeez, time, time team, team back again. <laughs> I, 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 let's begin that's so good so every new year ladies and gents if you're old school listeners and you've been following our little journey um um we used to do a time team where we look at uh, a year um and then um talk about that year what year is the same number corresponding with the episode it did it? It's, we started around about episode 50 i think we went back so to 1950. 1950 so yeah. we did every year and we talked about history at- movies yeah, mainly the horror movies from that year, but then that ties into the other films that were out and also pop culture events, things that happened. So yeah. it's a fun little section yeah. and, and we'll be jumping in the time machine later on and uh, we'll back to 2022 to find out exactly what happened last year because it was an eventful year. So excited. And I know Jamie will be excited that we're back in the old time team machine. She, but she, I'm not going to be excited because it's not going to be aired out for a little while now and it's going to be Dan's old style farts just looming around in it. I have dusted off the time machine. Don't you worry. I've got some magic trees in there. So it's all good. Don't you worry. There's a Yankee candle burning in there as well. All right. Um, so it's going to be lovely. Don't you worry about that. Um, so there we go. So what, it's your birthday. What have you been up to today to celebrate? Because actually we are recording on your birthday, which is also very cool. So it genuinely is your birthday as we record. So what have you been up to today, mister? I didn't do much today. It's a bit of a boring day, to be honest with you. I had a lack of sleep last night and ended up just kind of d- disrupting my day today. And um, didn't do that much. Much. I did. I started watching a uh, uh, a Steven Seagal movie, but it was shit. I, I, I got Which some, one? Exit Wounds. Was it? Ex- oh, yeah. yeah, Exit That's Wounds terrible. with DMX. Yeah. Rest and, in peace, DMX. Oh, right. and um, I got I did, yeah, I nearly got halfway through, and I was like, this is just a waste of. It was a birthday movie. I did watch that Hatchet Hike Hike uh, Hitchhiker. Uh, documentary. Yeah, the Hatchet Wielding Hitchhiker. I've seen that on that. So I originally I saw the, have to watch that. I originally saw that video of the interview back in the day, like when it was on. Uh, YouTube doing around, um, and it was very interesting. But yes, that was quite interesting. So I watched that, and um, and then I, <laughs> I decided to buy myself a treat. I found on Facebook someone selling 180 plus Blu-rays for 75 pounds. So I went and bought them, um, um, and I've got a few gems out of there. Actually, I, I don't know why. It's, I found a Serbian film on Blu-ray in it. Yeah, I don't know why you would need that on Blu-ray, but you now have it. Yeah, and Cannibal Holocaust on Blu-ray. Yes, again. Just loads of random stuff, um, but some good stuff as well, and it's quite nice to update my DVD collection, actually. Um, so you've got Natural Born Killers in there and a few other yes, good ones yes, as well. Original uh, Fra- Francis Ford Cobbler's Dracula, like shit like that. Um, but yeah, it's quite funny. I looked on the guy's Facebook profile, and I was, I was thinking, why is he selling all this stuff? And it, and it, looked, and it showed everything that this dude's selling on the marketplace. I was like, oh, fucking loads of shit. And I went on his actual profile, and I was like, oh, two months ago, he got married. There we go. I was like, yeah, that's why he's selling all these. Oh, I've got to get rid of these blue rays as soon as possible. Can't have this collection. Go, get rid of them. You're not having them in the house. Similarly, when I got married, and not, and this was my choice really, but we needed a bit of extra cash, and I was taking up a lot of room with my Sega Master System. So you did System. the same shit, yeah. Yeah, I put my Sega Master System with about a hundred odd games. It was I put it on for seven hundred quid because it, it was worth a lot more than that. Um, and a guy from just up the road in another town, a French guy actually, came knocking on the door and he said, are you sure? Because some of these games alone you can sell for £50 on eBay. I said, look, I just need a quick 
bit of cash. I'm getting married in a few weeks. Just take them off me. And he could see the pain in my face. And he said, he put his hand on my shoulder <laughs> with, a French, with a French accent as well. And he looked at me, and I'm not going to do the French accent, but he put his hand on my shoulder and he said to me, my friend, these are going to a good place, a good home. I will, I will look after these. And I could tell, because he, he was a massive Sega fan, I knew that they were going to a good place, so I was like, okay, good, I'll let them go. Yeah, I, that's the same as me, I've been selling my vinyl collection, um, and I've been set, I'm letting friends have first dibs before I just sell them to anyone nearly willy. And uh, it's nice, not, I say to them, it's nice though, because I, I know they're going to a good home. Yeah. Um, so that's something. But uh, the other thing I did was bought myself another birthday present, I actually bought myself a new set of turntables, which are the uh, digital decks. I'm actually going into the digital realm, so I'm going to try and get some more gigs DJing and stuff. But I can't wait, man. They turn up tomorrow. They look like some futuristic sh- shit. Lights and shit everywhere and buttons and shit. You're going to be Daft Punk. Basically, it is a bit like that. Um, but I what? just got so bored of just records anymore. I was just like, ugh. It's just, I've been doing it for like over 20 years. And... What, did the, uh, what did the DJ call his son? don't know. Eric. <laughs> Eric. Eric, 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 Eric. Do you like that? Yeah, it's very good. Little DJ Jake for you there. So yeah, so that's my birthday today. Um, it's quite nice just to treat myself to things. But yeah, it's one of those things you get to this age. You kind of all, I was, uh, the other day I, I've forgotten it was my birthday. So I was like, oh yeah, it's my birthday, isn't it? Well, I reminded you. I spoke to you a couple of days ago. And I said, how are you feeling about your birthday? And you said, oh, oh yeah. I know, I, I just kind of kept forgetting it's my birthday, it wasn't, it's just like, it's not a thing now so much really, um, but whatever, it, isn't it funny, birthdays, it's my day of birth, mm. today is celebrating my day of birth, why should that be celebrated? It's, just it's the anniversary the you... of you coming out of your mum. Yeah, it's weird, it's just a strange thing to celebrate, not because of the vaginal uh, reasons, but uh, you know, it's just uh, <laughs> Jesus but just, uh, just a weird thing, isn't it? It's I honestly but... never thought your mum's badge would come into this show, but I know, but it's been almost you, ten years. You made it worse by directly saying that and that, so let's get out of this. Right, that's my birthday. Um, I'm looking forward to this episode. I'm definitely looking forward to giving you some World of the Strange and um, going there with you on this. Excellent. And hosting that. And I'm looking forward to talking about these films. Now, have you been watching things, doing things? I have been watching Spitzball, so I can talk to you about some stuff. Um, Please do then. Well, uh, okay, straight out of the bat, I watched twice this week, only because Jay wanted to watch it as well. Um, I watched The Menu. Yes, I've heard it's very, very, very good. I've heard it's not strictly a horror film. Yeah, yeah, but it's kind of... It is a horror movie. And it is a horror movie. It is a horror movie. It's, a lot of nudity and gore in it, apparently. Mm, no nudity. Oh, okay. Um, I don't think there's one bit of nudity yet, actually. Um, or I gore. So, I don't know where you're getting that from. Um, Maybe I'm not thinking it was something else. Yeah, I reckon. Um, it's, a, it's a bit more of a classy film, but it's the sort of film where the Oscars, they'd be like, no, it's not. A, if it's going to win, it's not a horror movie. But it's like, well, it kind of is a little bit horrific in a way. It kind of has a it's sort of, a, it's kind of like Midsommar. In a way, it's like that. Okay. Not a direct horror movie in certain ways, sort of way, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, it's really good. I really enjoyed that as a film. Um, I definitely give that two thumbs up and recommend that. Have you watched anything? Uh, the only thing I've really watched um, because it's I, I did got I got so behind last year with 2022 horror films. I really, only saw a couple of films that were released that year. So I decided I would one film that everybody's talking about. Um, and it's doing the rounds and it's making a lot of people's top sort of five or top three or even some people are saying it's their, their movie of the year so I finally two nights ago sat down and I watched Barbarian yeah yeah um, which I won't spoil because it's brand new uh, still really but it's um, it's got you know it's got a lot of hype behind it it really had me on the edge of my seat I really loved it I gave it eight out of ten um, I know that you weren't as into the ending of it yeah, um, it, it um, just feels a little bit like whatever. But a fantastic ride to go on. I quite like the ending because it kind of was just like, it was like the cum shot, if you know what I mean. Like all this build up and then you just got this ridiculous sort of, what? And then and then I like the song they chose. Again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's um the, act- the actress in it is fantastic. Bill hmm. Skarsgård in it is fantastic. Uh, Justin yeah. Long shows up as well. Um, I'm not going to spoil it at all. You've got to go. You've got to watch, guys. Justin Long's um, tape measure is just so funny. 
know that bit's hilarious. And it comes back into play in a horrific way later so, on. So. so I saw the uh, world premiere um, at uh, Fright Fest, and it was really funny because when obviously a tape measure comes up, it's people just cracking up. <laughs> so, that. yeah, I watched that. That was brilliant. Um, there's a few new films that I haven't seen yet, but I've watched a bunch of trailers for this week. Um, do you mind if I just quickly whiz up through some of these just to say I'm looking forward to them? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so Evil Dead Rise. Um, did you see the trailer for that? Uh, a little bit of it. Like I said to you when you missed me, I'm, I have not really have any reason to want to watch another Resident Evil movie. I like Resident no, Evil in Resident the Cabin. Evil. Um, it's not, Evil Dead. Res, not Resident Evil, sorry. <laughs> Evil Dead movie. Um, I love, like Evil Dead in the Cabin, like those movies. Um, I don't know. I don't have a. I don't know. It might be great. I like, so I wasn't, so I, the way it works, apparently, because there's three ne- Necronomicons well, very, in the... Very quickly, I wasn't asking for a Hellraiser movie, but I ended up watching a Hellraiser movie, that new one, and going, yeah, I really like that film. Well, the same can be said. You and I were both fans, and I know Jamie is a fan of the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Who knew that that was going to be a really good... Like, I yeah, really I didn't enjoyed mind that. that. Film. I didn't mind it at all. That made Jamie's top five, I think. Bo was absolutely horrified. Um <laughs> But I agree with her. It was a really I, fun. I don't, I don't mind. If, I didn't mind it. No, I didn't mind it at all. But with the ne- this one, apparently, because uh, what the way they've done it is in Ash vs. Evil Dead or the Army of Darkness, whatever you want to call it, uh, that third movie, there's three Necronomicons. So this is about the third Necronomicon. And they're all slightly different, but they all do the same thing. And this one is about a family mainly the mother and the children it's actually got kids in this one and the the, the r-rated trailer is gory as it is so the film's going to be it looks great to me and i was a fan of that you know the newer one that came out recently yeah, that was super um, gory, wasn't it? yeah so i'm looking forward to that um another one that i'm really looking forward to and m night Shyamalan is somebody who people either love or hate or you love some of his films hate the rest but there's a new movie he's got coming out called knock at the cabin yeah i, I don't mind the look at that you, you've got uh Bartista and his little wrinkly forehead yep his brain coming out of his head um wow. it looks good a bunch of people knock on someone's cabin door while a family's on holiday and they say uh you've got to sacrifice someone of your family otherwise the the world's going to end and it looks like it's sort of biblical post apop not post apocalyptic, biblical apocalyptic kind of like who knows what it is, active guard, I don't know, but yeah, it'll probably have a twist at the end because it's a Shyamalan film. Yeah, no, I'm uh, well up for watching that film. I think that looks alright. And the other one I wanted to mention uh, is Renfield. I because... thought the trailer looked fucking shit. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that. I I just like that they saved Nicholas Cage till the end. It's, um, it looks such a cheap film. I'm not even going to bother watching it. It's just like... So Nicolas Cage playing Dracula. Um, yeah. And uh, I can't remember the name of the guy. Nicholas Holt plays Renfield. Um, it's a bit of a comedy. It, so... it was it, In the trailer, it's very lit like a Rob Zombie movie. Oh, really? Yeah, it, lo- really it looks, it looks lit like a Rob Zombie movie, and it just like looked, it just felt really, it felt real flat to me myself. I was just like, nah, it doesn't do, nothing's pulling me in for this. The other one that I've heard good things about that's already out now is Megan. I, again, I, I, I watched the trailer in the cinema, I've watched movies, and there's a bit where the, the doll thing turns to the wall and does like a flip over and a dancing and leans against it and stands forward. It's like, fuck off! It's, like this is for the TikTok but, generation. I am not yeah, but that's interested. What it, it's, it's from that. Yeah, so and, from, and that, that doesn't that. work for, for me, you know. But but it's apparently a very funny moment within the film when you watch the. It can be, there is a reason for it, and it's got Alison Williams in it, who is in Get Out. Um, it looks very good to me. It looks like uh, like a, an updated version of Chucky or something. I don't know. I think Megan looks really good, and I'm really excited to watch that. Now, Jay said to me, can we go to cinema watch it? I was like, I don't want to see that film. Don't put me through this. I think you'll be surprised. Uh, I think you'll be surprised. If I give it the time of day. I'll tell you what I did get into. I found it at a charity shop. It would have come from the first uh, the season. It was only one season. It would have come with three discs in the box. We only got one of the discs, but it had eight episodes on it. It's a 20-episode 20 season, and that's all they ever made. Have you ever heard of Kolchak the Night Stalker? Yes, you did. You I talked brought about it up once. The, I watched one of the movies. Episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, well, there's two movies that came out. So, our American friend listeners, they they will probably know what we're talking about, unless we've got young American listeners who might not. 
Um, but they will know. Now, this was also, I didn't realise, the inspiration for the X-Files. And you can see that when you watch it. And uh, so I picked up one of the discs um, for like a quid, which are like load of episodes, and they're so good. Me and Sarah just watched them. It's just so fun. And found out they're actually on YouTube. And I actually recommend, if you kind of like kind of 70s American TV, um, I think definitely recommend it. There's like this one episode where he's on a, a ocean cruise liner. He's an investigator, and he's been kind of like Peter Parker. And he's sent out on his cruise ship to um, uh, talk to all the singles there. It's like a singles cruise ship, basically, just a, sh- a, a STD fest, basically. <laughs> and um, uh, the one of them's a werewolf. Amazing. But it's like a werewolf who just throws people over the boat. Ah! Like kind of the old Universal ones, rather than like gore and shit. And they've just been throwing women over the water, left, left right, and centre. And uh, he's got to go around and figure out who it is and stuff. And he goes and gets manages to get some... They, he somehow manages to get the stuff to make silver bullets in his cabin. Like, Where did you get this stuff from? <laughs> you just came on with your camera. How have you got... How are you making silver bullets in your little cabin? That's incredible. Um, but it's a really good show. Um, and I definitely recommend watching it. About 45-minute episodes. Real fun. Real fun. Um, talking of 70s TV, um, very late 70s, early 80s, I noticed just Netflix added The Incredible Hulk. I saw that, yeah. Um, but it, I thought it was all the seasons, but it's, it's just the one film, um, the, the, the original pilot, I think, by the looks of it. Oh. Which is a shame, because I was down for watching... Yeah, I thought I think it'd be the they TV did a few seasons of that. How random is that? Um, yeah. yeah. I don't know, if I watched, it, watched Hulk again, it'd probably spin me out a bit, because I remember it just kind of being a bit scared but it's okay because it's the Hulk but it's still a bit scary because it's very kind of adult and serious it's too scary for me I, uh, but I used to as a kid it's like, my but it's the Hulk changed. though but yeah yeah but as soon as his eyes went white you knew that shit was about to go down and the clothes started ripping and that was quite scary I remember that being scary well I tied it in with metamorphosis like werewolves so that's why I was afraid of it when I was a kid because yeah. I was a yeah. thriller and things like that but yeah well, there we go. So, anything else you've been watching? Anything else you wanted to add or talk about? Um, I have watched some bits and bobs. Um, Sarah said to me, this time you can just go on the Facebook page and you can see what you've been watching because I've been tagging you in the stuff. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea because she said it's rubbish when Dan asks you and you don't know, <laughs> you just don't know what you're doing. So, I have been watching some bits and bobs. Um, but I think I sort of said them really. I tried watching that new um, movie with. Um, old serious face Christian Bale um, the pale oh, yeah. pale whatever the majiggy is I struggled pale on that though something I got about halfway and I was like oh, I'm struggling with this um, I'm going to have a quick scan down there. you watched the um, Glass Onion didn't you as well did you watch that um, yeah I didn't mind that at all did you watch it over Christmas no I, I didn't really like Knives Out to be honest with you I was one of the few people on the planet that thought it was a bit boring um, oh well, I enjoyed it I watched Knives Out again before I watched Glass Onion actually I, I probably it. will I probably will watch Glass Onion and, and in doing so I'll I'll re-watch it when I'm in a good mood and I might like it this time my dad said to me I watched a film called Glass Onion the other day because it had Dave Bautista in it I said oh yeah did you like it he said yeah did you know that there's another one and I said yes dad that's the sequel he said oh what I said, you've watched part two first. He said, oh, right, okay. <laughs> I said, go, it doesn't go on matter. Netflix and watch Knives Out, and you might like that as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I did also watch uh, um, Memoirs of Murder, which is a movie by Bong Joon-ho, who um, you know did Parasite and The Host and yeah. stuff like that. Um, that was quite good. Um, um, yeah, I've heard that's a good one, actually. Um, I've got a few films of his on my watch list to get through at some point. Yeah, um, but apart from that, yeah, you know, I watched a few things at Christmas with um, Sarah and that. I went and popped there. It's quite nice to just check out normal stuff. Really, really enjoyed Harold and Kumar's Christmas. I thought that was fucking great. <laughs> I watched Terror Train. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched about, a bit of that while I was cooking with Sarah one day, actually. About 10pm yeah. on New Year's Eve, because I've got kids now, so my wife was in bed early, and I thought, well, I'll put this on. So I managed to watch Terror Train on New Year's Eve, which is a New Year's Eve film, obviously. So, yeah, enjoyed that. Always, It's a great film, and I completely forgot David Copperfield is in it as the magician, which is hilarious, really. Yeah, and it's like, well, uh, you know, why do you get him on there? Because he's a magician, basically. So you don't really say much, just does magic. I was thinking, like, if they did that now, who would they get on it? Like, David Blaine, or who would they... But he's not even that relevant anymore, is he, David uh, Blaine? Darren Brown, maybe. 
But then he's he's not really known, uh, I don't think, outside the UK too much. He's more of a hypnotist, really, isn't he? He's not and a magician. He's bloody good, though, if you don't Paul know Paul Daniels. Fucking Paul Daniels? His little hand. Oh, no, it's Beadle. Tommy Cooper. Tommy Cooper. Uh, so, do you ever seen that episode? Uh, episode? <laughs> fucking hell, have you ever seen that episode where he died? No, have you ever seen that YouTube video where he yeah, dies on stage? That. that is the snarliest shit. So. Oh, there's a stand-up comedian. Everyone watches. Literally, he just t- falls down and dies. Well, he takes a few steps back and sort of stumbles behind the curtains, and then apparently just dropped dead. Yeah, it's, it's a, on YouTube, and it's just the weirdest thing just to go. Oh, there's the end of that person. Well, talking to people dying on camera. One last thing I'll say before we wrap up the intro. <laughs> Which I don't is, like this stuff. I don't like stuff like that. I don't like well, real life shit. You know that that program to catch a predator. It's a a pedo program, is it? Yeah, yeah. So the reason that program ended is because the final episode they shot, they... Got the wrong person? They talked to himself? No, they they found out some Texas governor had been... Was basically... They pretended to be a 13-year-old boy, Mm. and he was like trying to meet up for sex with this 13-year-old boy. And when they raided his house with 25 police... My birthday episode's gone dark. (laughs) When they raided his house with police, he shot himself... On, like on camera and killed himself and they said so that oh. episode obviously has never aired and yeah. that's why that program ended because they were like shit people might kill themselves oh okay we better stop making this program <laughs> well, well don't be bumming children yeah i mean that is the thing don't rape children then, i guess then 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 yeah and if you do kill yourself oh well yeah it's not not big, <laughs> big raping really. children yeah, you know. i have no sympathy Wow, this is as, exactly as I intended your birthday intro to go. So, so no, I was hoping that this like was that. good the discussion we were getting to. <laughs> right, anyway, on a happier note, I'm looking forward to discussing this stuff. Do we do we want to have a wee break? Yeah, let's have a break because you want to do The Relic first from 1997. So Horror Express is a better movie. Um, and uh, we watched where, uh, Sarah found the relic boring when we watched it and I knew that when I was watching it I was kind of keeping an eye on her a little bit only because sometimes she falls asleep but I just knew that she, I was like this isn't this oh, no, because it's funny cause you know when like your experience when you start watching movies with your kids when you watch movies with other people or children you start to watch it in their eyes yeah. Um, uh, so I, I was watching on the show and I was like, yeah, it is a bit slow, but that. But I have a massive fondness for the film, but I'm just saying, like, I think the Horror Express is a better movie, so let's just do that one first, The Relic. Fantastic. So let's take a break. We'll have a little trailer for The Relic, uh, and then when we come back, we'll, we'll get stuck into it. Tom Sizemore. Not getting mm. stuck in Tom Sizemore. What's he? Mm, it's a bit weird. Right, let's get uh, out of here. Security, you were the last one to leave last night. Did you see or hear anything strange? Well, I thought I heard something as I was leaving, but it could have been anything. We're sweeping teams of two. Nobody goes in alone. This place is not going to open until every room is clear. I'll go. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Any idea about a weapon? Something big. The board is hosting a governor preview here tomorrow night. It would be a disaster for us if we had to postpone. We may have somebody on our hands who makes Jeffrey Dahmer look like a Cub Scout. You have to let the gala go on. Something's wrong. Come on, what's the matter with you? extinction of the human race. The Relic from 1997. A homicide detective and an anthropologist tried to destroy a South American lizard-like god who's on a people-eating rampage in a Chicago museum. 
That's a great, that's a great isn't it? Everything you've just said sounds says brilliant. awesome to me. It sounds like an 80s <laughs> B-movie for a start. Yeah, and it is definitely a bit of a B movie. There's definitely a vibe to it. This came out during a batch of movies like Species, Mimic, um, uh, Anaconda, where there was CGI was like still newish, and people were pushing the boundaries of what they could do with it. So Creature Features made a bit of a comeback in the late nineties. Um, yeah, you're right. And I liked most of them. I really, I have a soft spot. I really like Anaconda. Mimic's okay. I really like Species. Aberration. Aber, yeah, aber, Aberration, I think it's called. It's a movie I quite liked. It was a, it's a lady is running from some gangster boyfriend and goes out to the woods with a, a load of money or something. But there's like some little lizard things out there and stuff like that. And that was kind of cool. You know, that sort of, that was a lot of late 90s. Um, yeah, those sort of movies were about... Uh, uh, you know, you also had, like, Roland Emmerich's Godzilla. Oh, we both love that. Um, which is it's one of those things that people a lot of people don't like. And people don't really rate this so much. It's only got 4.8 out of 10 on IMDb, and I, I quite like this film. Um, hence why I picked it. Well, I have a massive soft spot for it too. I have the VHS big box as rental it's um, it's a horror it's a mystery that's what i love about it yeah and tom sizemore plays a bloody good character in it um i gotta say it's the best i've ever sort of seen him he actually um uh you know he's given the opportunity to this is when he was sort of obviously in biggish movies but he was always like a side character yeah, same Private Ryan. And this is his opportunity to... LA Confidential. This is an opportunity to actually, uh, 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 you know, lead the movie, be a leading actor. So, um, yeah, he jumps on it. I think it's come across really well. I'm quite impressed, like, the director, has, I think, has done a brilliant job. And he also shot the film as well, which is really fucking impressive when you've got a director that films as well. Yeah, so it's directed by Peter Hyams, who we have covered one of his films a few years back when we did a new, another New Year's special, um, actually. We we did End of Days with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he directed that. Yeah. Um, he also has directed Time Cop, um, uh, a couple of Van Damme fil- two or three Van Damme films. Stay Tuned, which is where the couple gets sucked into the TV. Um, so he's got a very strange career going on. I'd say this is probably my favourite of all his films in his back catalogue, as they say. This film was quite delayed from when it originally came out because, you know, I think once, as soon as Scream came out, all studios would have been back with like the 80s craze of VHS players being in everyone's homes. Great, that's all everyone to start making fucking slashers because that's making money. So all the people who jumped on it, but this came out a year later, and it's not because they're like, oh, great, let's make us a monster movie because all these slashers are doing well. It's because the effects took so long to get made, and that's why also you don't see the monster till halfway through the film. And we should mention the god of special effects himself, Stan Winston, mm. is responsible for the creature in this. Um, yeah, and we can talk about very quickly now the creature that they made. Unfortunately, they didn't really think about it. They wanted to make something so unique, the the lead sculptor, um, that didn't really think about the actors inside and had to squeeze people in. And apparently it was very uncomfortable and very horrible working conditions and tiring for the uh, people inside the, uh, the monster. And the monster looks great. I really like it. Yeah, the monster is one of the coolest sort of creatures you'll see specifically from sort of the 90s this type type of movie that was coming out it's this giant sort of rhino leopard lizard thing with almost like a predator mouth it's just very unique it kind of reminds me of so the creature in the host that career movie that we covered it's kind of like that but like the better looking younger brother of it you know the, the brother that goes to the gym mm. Um, whereas the host is like the slob in the family, whereas this creature is a bit more hench and quite quite terrifying because it runs quite quickly and can climb up walls. It, it looks like <laughs> a, very much like a, a, a full-on apex predator, like one of the bad boys. Yeah, you know, it, it's got everything. You know, um, uh, yeah, and uh, unfortunately we're still in the realm of um, uh, not so great CGI at this point. So the film does 
at times have bits which is not as good. They're not bad. There's not many of them. But another thing with this film, which we'll quickly really discuss, is the fact it's a very, very, very dark movie. And unfortunately, I don't know if this is worldwide, but in the UK, the DVD which came out, the transfer of that, it was so bad. The black is so black. Like, uh, you couldn't see anything. And if you try tried it on your TV, even bring that up, you're just going to bring up a white, grey, snowy look to the black. If you go to down, you know, you're not going to go any down any lower. So um, I don't know what the fuck happened there. Um, so I bought a Blu-ray for this because I was like, I want to see the film. I ended up watching it twice. I want to see the film uh, uh, with the correct colour. And apparently the VHS were cool, but the DVD were not good. So please do let us know, especially... Out in the, elsewhere in the world of the UK, if um, your, your DVD was shit. Let's know. Yeah, it's the Alien vs. Predator 2 scenario, isn't it, where that film was so dark you couldn't see anything. And it does happen sometimes where the print is really bad. <clears throat> um, yeah, the VHS I've got, obviously, probably bought it around about, I'd say probably say 99 or something. It was an ex-rental. It's still fine now. It's I can see everything that's going on. But I actually ended up watching it weirdly found out it was on bbc iplayer because mm. they do have a couple of films on there and it was it was perfect quality hd very bright i could see absolutely everything in the dark mm. you know the bits that you're not supposed to see stayed in the dark and everything else was yeah it was well lit so i had no issues with it and it does you know a lot of the film takes place in the basement of a museum that's had a power cut so there are going to be dark moments but yeah of course you want to under you want to see what what's in the dark there's it's no point a, if you the dvd is <clears throat> too bad and this is not just um this is not just my opinion this is um this is conversations on different forums and stuff um because yeah. i looked into it and i was like yeah, there's a lot of people just moaning about that and then i found out the blu-ray wasn't as bad so i picked up the blu-ray is great has no a- extras whatsoever it's literally the movie. It's like, oh, that is shit. But, you know, someone could have done something. Like, you know, it's, it seems to be quite a big production. Like, cause a lot of money's gone into this movie being made. And I just, I probably just didn't do so well. But like I said, came out a year after uh, Scream came out. Scream 2 came out a year after Scream, I think. So, you know, I, Scream 2's coming out. People want to go see that. I think um, The Relic <coughs> has uh, picked up a bit of a cult following in the last 10 years and i think if you asked a horror fan now particularly somebody in their 30s and 40s yeah, lots, lots of creature features they'd say yeah that's a decent film and the argument online which i've noticed and you sent me a, something as well is that the creature is badass you know what no matter, no matter what you think of the film the creature is badass and it's a very yeah. original plot although it's not because it feels a bit like the thing the horror express that kind of like we said in the intro to the show it's a little bit of a there's a theme with these movies we're covering, but it's still a really decent film, really good idea. And I, it's like night. Imagine night at the museum, but instead of you're stuck in a museum at night with everything coming alive, exactly. there's a big monster in there. To me, it's also kind of got an '80s tip to it, or an, a Universal movie uh, from back in the day film. To it. it's like a single location, a group of people stuck off, and there's like electric power goes off, and there's a big monster off them in a museum. What more do you want? It rips people's heads off to take out a certain part of their brain because it needs it to feed, like of hormones. What more do you need in the movie? You know? I know, and it doesn't feel forced. You know, we're cause... a detective and a mystery because the detective yeah. doesn't know the detective. We're sitting there going, "Well, we know what's going on. Well, we kind of we know it's a monster. We don't know how. We know it's a monster, and we know what's going on. But you don't know what's going on, so we're watching you try and figure it out. And you just all of a sudden you're like, "Oh God, now you're in the cellars uh, in the in the." bit down under the ground and you're you're stuck and there's a fucking dead dog and you know and the plot you know the way that the plot works is quite clever for me anyway that in that the the night that they throw this giant you know um gala to raise money Mm. for the museum is the night that the the creature decides to strike and it's the night that they have a power cut in the museum and and it all sounds a bit forced but actually there's a reason for all of this and it works so so well and like you said the detective tom sizemore plays lieutenant vincent d'agosta and he's great because he's we talked off air he's very john mcclain um there's there's, there's a lot of diehard vibes in this film he's a a, just a a normal guy he's going through a divorce his wife's got custody of his dog he swears a lot but He's got an extra bit to his personality. He's extremely superstitious. And the museum happens to be uh, having an exhibition which is about superstition. 
Yeah, so again, it all, it's all very nicely written. Um, talking of written, just before we get into the plot of the film, Gav pointed out to me, dear sweet listeners, and I didn't know this, neither did Gav, this is one of a series of um, books with the same detective in them. Um, the book series is called Preston and Child. Um, how many did you say there was? Uh, there was... I, I, don't know. I don't know. I was just found a picture. It's probably it, about it 14, like 15... Like, yeah, there's a ton of books, all featuring the same detective. Um, detective, which is really cool. So it's kind of like the Da Vinci Code before Dan Brown came on the scene, because every single book you is got the relic. a supernatural yeah, type. Yeah, the Relic book, and you've also got a sequel to the Relic book in there as well, which is kind of cool. So any of you readers out there, Kate, you're a reader, you know, any of you readers out there... Um, Jump on it. Let us know what's going on. Yeah. With even just or, a sequel to this, that would be quite interesting. Or even if you have you heard of these books, you know, let me know. Let us know what what they're like because I, I can only imagine they're very good. You know, if they're sort of supernaturally type things like this, I imagine they're quite fun. Yeah, because I liked um, all the Dan Brown stuff. I, I, read I, like, I like mystery. I like I like a, um, a, a, a detectivey type person going around looking for things and like not knowing what it is. And there's a supernatural murder thing going on. It's, it's kind of a thing for. I could like as a kid, like this movie as a kid, and, you know, when this came out, to be fair, I was all like 20. But like being younger now, if I'd discovered this when I was younger, I'd, I'd love this movie. What, one fi- final thing I will say is, well, another reason that you and I probably love this, and you might not realise this, um, is there's a hell of a lot of Predator 2 vibes in this for me. Yeah, that too. With the sort of, um, although it's Jamaican uh, drug lords, they they at some point think there's Brazilian drug lords involved in this. Uh, you know, there's just this very gritty... I don't know, it's just a, it's just a great film. Yeah. We're going to talk about it. Let's get into it. <clears throat> so, where are we at with this then? It's uh, not in Brazil. I do feel like this beginning bit has an arachnophobia-type vibe as well, this movie does to it. Yeah, another reason why this is a film that we love. Totally agree with you. We've got this uh, photographer. <clears throat> he basically works for the museum and he goes around and he also finds art, art, artefacts and sends them back to the museum. Uh, he goes around the world just discovering stuff, um, tribes, uh, imagine just other sort of things like this. Um, He's a bit like a chubby Indiana Jones. He just, rather than going on adventures, he just goes off and says, oh, can I have that relic and take it back to Chicago for the museum? Yeah, 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 he does is, that does have that a little bit. Um, and he's, he's hanging out basically with some dudes doing a little dance around a fire. And uh, they give him some tea or some shit. And he just drinks it, then just starts tripping <clears> balls. <throat> yeah, and the, what they make the tea, what they use in the tea, is these, these little red um, sort of fungus stuff that's growing on leaves that they scrape in there and gives it to him. Yeah, and like you say, Gabby, trip balls, and then they wind him up a bit because one of the guys dresses up in a bit of an animal sort of costume and comes up to him and sort of goes... Rawr, rawr, and the guy's like... Yeah, yeah. But I think they're trying to show him... You know, they're kind of almost... It's almost like he said to them, show me, you know, what your your tribal sort of power at this rumor about your tribe is and they're like all right you really want to know you really want to know so they give him this potion and he drinks it but there's a lot more to it than that which we will find out later yeah and we don't we know what's going on um and it's quite it's not confusing but i wasn't really sure coming back to even though i'm choosing this movie i'll come back to this going i've seen it quite a few times um come back to it though I was just a bit like oh I don't I can't just exactly remember the r- real reasoning for it all um, so funny enough watching it twice was quite good this week actually yeah uh, and he so he's got this relic um, of their god and he's he wants to send it back along with a few other things in crates back to Chicago but he has a change of heart at the last minute and he says he runs to the dock in Brazil and he says do not get send these crates to Chicago and they're like sorry dude they're already on the they're already on the boat yeah I'm confused here you can help me with this and so he says that he, he's like don't basically he's like you know how much money can he's like I haven't got time for this we've got to get off the dock straight away and then he, he goes and jumps and hides into these crates and gets lifted on board the ship so he busts open these crates and he looks inside it and there's, there's, it's not the right thing, they're like carpets. And he's like, oh, fucking hell, it's the wrong crates. And then we have a shot of the crates back on dock. So does that mean they're getting picked up with the next ship? Yeah, there was, so they, they do explain in a, they explain a bit later on that there was a mix-up. 
Uh, and, and the crates didn't get put on the ship, and they ended up get, arriving a few weeks late. I was confused for this. Yeah, so he did all that for no reason, really. So we will find out later on why he had a change of heart about sending the crates back, because he's now seen some shit, some serious shit, after tripping balls. But also, that potion may have affected his DNA. We will find out later on as we get into it. Um, so, yeah, we come back to Chicago six weeks later. Yeah. And uh, Tom Sizemore is called to this boat. There's lots of blood everywhere, all over the ship. I like this bit. Um, you know, I love a good murder on, on, on movies. That is not in real life. Um, and we, we, we get a nice little bit of sort of character building because he's rubbing a little bullet, which we find out later on is a bullet that didn't go off. Yeah, well, we, we just get to see... It's a, obviously, all films at the beginning of them, we have these little scenes. He's getting to know our characters, not our people. And this is like our main dude. The dude and his dude dudette partner. He's not a lady, but his uh, dude partner. Um, they're both sort of detectives there, and it's quite nice. Sort of, we just start to get this, and it's, it's yeah, like you say, it's, the, the film is not forced at all. Actually, it's a very, very just. We're just there with them this day. We happen to be a flying the wall, and there's happen to be a murder and they're going on. We're just following them, and I, I really like this scene, and I love the discovery they have. But do you want to tell us about this? Yeah, so it's a very spooky. It's sort of like the Mary Celeste. So this ship's rocked up. No one on it. There's just blood everywhere. There's no crew. They don't know what's happened. It, it's like a ghost ship. They found it just like floating around outside. So basically, you know, let's um, let's put it in. So that's what they've done. But there's no one there. And they suspect there is a smell though. That it's a, yeah, they they smell something. But they suspect there it was a drugs something to do with a drugs cartel, Brazilian or South American drugs cartel, and they think that wh- whoever it was came on board, got what they needed killed everybody threw them overboard and that's that so Sizemore he's always got a hunch so Detective Augusta he's like hang on a minute I, I, I think we should need to search everywhere let's search 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 and the smell gets stronger as they get to one particular crate and inside the crate they find six bodies they don't just find the crate in, in, oh, it's, like, it's literally underneath where they are it's not the cra- in a crate though it's like in the Oh, it's in the bit under it's the, in the ship. Bowel isn't it? Or whatever the ship, and uh, they just look, hey, help me with this, and pull it up, and it's just it was just straight away. It's like it's kind of like your jaws scene with the head floating out of the water, but yeah. loads, of, loads of bodies, like rib cage goes by, and just be mm. like, oh, it's a bit yucky. There's some really good effects in this because well, you got Stan Winston for a start, you know. So here we go. A ship's rocked up with six bodies all beheaded. Mystery. Tom Sizemore is on the case. Mystery. Tom Sizemore says, let me grab my fake penis and get to work straight away on this. Let's fake cock our way around here. <laughs> One week later... We do find out his ex-wife got custody of his, his dog. It's a, oh. the sort of thing in a movie where you've got the little side bits that don't need to be in there, but they're in there just for quirkiness. Uh, his his uh, ex-wife has basically got custody of their dog. Not a child, a dog, and he's not that happy. <laughs> yeah, because it's quite a funny scene where he says, I heard uh, Diane got custody of Joshua. And he's like... Oh my God! Don't bring that up. And he's like, I didn't know he had a son. He's like, he's, he hasn't. It's his dog. And then it comes. It keeps coming up as well. People keep asking about. I heard. Uh, heard you about that. And so how does everyone know about this? We all, uh, there's another bit in this where, like, where they've got the, the two cops later on that have got. It's almost like is it on the cutting room scene? Their their real bromance that these two cops have got later on. They have. Uh, they even have a little discussions about coffee at times. You know, I, I love those two. Twice. At the, at the party, he's like... It's like the, there's one bit that says, like... Be, it's disgusting. When it's they get separated. Bad. When they get separated, and he's like, have you, have you got enough bullets? And he, have you got enough bullets? He goes, yeah. No, they're just going to look at each other, and the water's coming down their face. Like, are, they, are they about to kiss? Are they... You know, what's going on with these two? Yeah, it's there it's like good... there's more in there. That these two basically said, went up to Dretch and said, we're just going to work on our characters, even though we're literally bit players. And they're they like, yeah, brilliant. go for it. And the same can be said for the two guys that work in the security room um, in the museum. They they got on really well. And they, it's like they you can tell they've worked together for years and years and years. Mm. And they say, hey, don't lock the door behind you. I hate it when you do that. And just little things, you know, that's what makes this film quite a little bit more than the average film. There's just a lot more... There's some good writing in it. Yeah, totally. Good characters. So we got a week later and we're basically at the museum. Um, we're, we're, and we're showing this massive museum and there's an exhibition. It's basically this museum is getting a bit excited because this Friday night is going to be a major opening of a new exhibit. And the mayor's come in. And, and the, mayor, the mayor's big-breasted wife that is not big-breasted. 
I know, but he talks about his wife's cleavage a lot, doesn't he? But there is no cleavage there, and she doesn't wear a dress showing any cleavage either. Well, before that, we meet Dr. Margot Green. <laughs> I just wanted to just discuss the boo thing, and I find that quite weird, because it's a really... I'm not even saying this is a weird thing, like, I'm obsessed with breasts or something. This is a real thing, like, specifically comes up with him saying, my wife's cleavage. I suppose we get to it. But anyway, yeah, we're, we're introduced to the museum and our major characters, and we've got Margot. Yeah. Penelope Ann Miller plays her, and she is um, not your average doctor. She's, you know, she she takes these young boys... I mean, she's to like emphasise... Yeah, she is Dr. Dre, still Dre. Um, she takes some young boys by surprise because they're sort of talking <laughs> so, about... So does Jimmy Savile. <laughs> God, Jesus Christ. Look, it's your birthday episode. I'll let her get away with that, but that's it. Um, because there's some boys that are planning on... And they do stay overnight in the museum, naughty little boys, on a school trip. But they're sort of talking about it. And then one of them says... One of, they start staring at her because she starts sort of getting ready to go in the museum by taking some of her clothes off and put them on. And she says... She's, like, she's untucking her shirt from her jeans. She it's, says, doesn't your not... mum tell you not to stay? And they're like, didn't your mum tell you not to get dressed in the street? Yeah. And then she, and then they're like, who are you anyway? And she says, I'm a doctor. And yeah. they're like, you're a doctor? And yeah, that's the kind of... Like, finding the, out, the yeah. That keeps coming up. Because later on, Tom Sizemore's like, I need to meet Dr. Green. Where is he? And she's like, I'm Dr. Green. So it, it's that it usual... Is, it is 1997, obviously. If it's a bit delayed, maybe it's 95 they shot this or whatever, or not even at 94, but it, it, come on. At that point then, no one's thinking any sort of... Well, if you've got to be a male to be any form of doctor whatsoever, that's just, just crazy thinking. Well, she's an evolutionary biologist, she and she's actually, working indeed. on this massive project uh, with regards to evolution, obviously. She's and worried she's, she's got... going to lose her grant. Yeah, she's got a team of people that rely on it. You know, they're all getting paid. They all sit in this museum working on the, these experiments, etc. And there's a, she's got a, an, an enemy called Greg, um, Dr. Greg Lee. And he is already had a grant. And now he's apparently applying for a second grant, which she finds out. She's very unhappy about it because if he gets the grant, her project gets shut down. Yeah. All the hard work gets absolutely wasted. So there's some, again, the writing, you know, we're, we're with these characters, we get a bit more. What it's also doing is it's laying out some villains like Greg and a few of the people like the, the mayor's buddies and that. They're, they're, all, they're all dickheads. We know they're going to get eaten by this monster at some point and it's brilliant and I love the way it does this. Quentin Tarantino's, uh does a podcast and um, he actually covered this film because he covers movies. Uh, if you didn't know this, Quentin Tarantino's got a podcast. Um, yeah, I've heard he has. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, I can't remember what off the top of my head what it's called, but it would be easy to find. Uh, and the only thing I can remember he, a take away from his podcast when he covered this film was um, he said that he's like, she's been a dick about that Grant thing. That, that dude should be fully sort of fine to just go ahead and get that Grant. And that was the only thing I sort of remember from him sort of discussing that for a while. And I was like, okay, fair enough, it's random. <laughs> Well, while all this hoo-ha is happening and she's having a go at Greg, etc., there's some boxes that have arrived from Brazil. Yes, yes. A bit late. And they are put into uh, John Whitney's office. Now, Dr. John Whitney was the photographer from the very beginning, and he works in the Chicago Museum with him. So, again, you've got that arachnophobia vibe. Yeah. Because no one's seen or heard from him. Yeah, it's a bit of a um, mystery, but they still assume in because these packages turned up. And this is, like, before... Uh, um, well, we have got the internet there, actually, haven't we? But 97, of course we have. Um, but Quite I primitive don't know. internet, though. But, you know, as before smartphones or whatever, or mobile phones. So he hasn't... But basically, he hasn't got hold of them, and they're not that too fussed, because they've had these packages turn up. So they're assuming that he's still about. He's just sent the packages. But, um, so can we do a spoiler here? And just Can I just say, like, basically what happens? Is he then in one of them, isn't he? Yeah, he, he must have been in the crate. He must have pulled out one of the carpet specimens or whatever and got in that crate and somehow... I guess. No, 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 no. They explain later on that he got off the boat, found a tunnel from the docks that leads underground because they're in those tunnels. How far do it's... these tunnels go? And they say they, they go right to the docks. So something could potentially get off a boat and get in the tunnel and follow it all the way to the museum. Yes. No. So that's how he did it. Okay. And it's, it's funny, the whole thing with the boat coming over and everyone dying on a ship, it's very Dracula. That is very Dracula. Coming to England. Um, but that's essentially what's going on with it. We will get to that anyway. But, um... but in these two crates, there's a relic in one of them which they're going to start breaking down to and sort of 
using a laser to clean and you know so they can really uh, study it and then the other thing that's in the crate is just loads of leaves gav so loads and loads of leaves with some red stuff on them which i think is like a, a weed fungus or some eggs or something like that and um there's a lovely old fella called uh, dr frock in a wheelchair he's a curator and he kind of quite high up in the museum oh, and he's his little smile when he sees the monster I know he's a great character. He has a lovely again, little smile. There is a lot of good characters in this. Even the Ganja Smoking security guard is a fantastic character, which we'll get to him in a minute. Um, and the little the little lady that looks a bit like um, Ronnie Corbett in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Doctor Anne Cuthbert. Yeah, she is. She's, she's super small. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, so um, he says, Doctor, the curator says. Yes, Dr. Margo, you can take one of the leaves to study. She's like, yes, because she loves... She's fucking nerd. She's like, yes, I want to study this leaf. Yeah, so out. she takes the leaf back and just puts it in a big sort of tub and just leaves that alone. <laughs> leaves leaf it alone. That alone. And um, basically, it becomes night time now, and these little, these little fuckers... I know, cheeky little shits. Cheeky I would not fuckers. have the guts to stay overnight in a museum at their age. Jeez. I know, they, are, they have got a big kahunas. But like, the bigger kid, he's like, he's the brave one. The other kid's like, I don't think we should be here. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I, it's quite cool. But basically, we've got these two kids just hiding away in the in the uh, in this museum and just going to find. Oh, there's a staircase. Let's go over here. Oh, don't know about that. We've also got a security guard who's just thought, you know, he's going to sneak off to the loose and manages to put out a joint. He's gone for a quick sneaky uh, joint break. Yep, and he sort of he opens the window up and he's in there. And he hears someone come in. I can't even do it. Yeah. It's a good, uh, very good noise, actually, isn't it? Yeah, so, so this a real wheezy like breathing. Yeah. Back, and he's like, Johnson, is that you? Who's that? Who's that? And he's just like covering his joint like, oh, no, I'm going to get busted for smoking weed. But then before anything else can happen. A big, massive monster arm with a flash of a second comes into the toilet door. Cubicle. Grabs his ankle, pulls him out. Pulls him out. Boom. I like this bit. Very scary. Is that nice? It's like it's made, like that. Made me jump in the cinema when I watched this back in '97. So that monster and creep show, that one in the crate, managed to actually got out or sort of thing. You know, it's just like, what is this monster? Or the monster in Big China, Little China? Oh yeah, it's like that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like what is that? What grabbed him? Like, what so we fuck? know there's we know there's a monster with a hand big enough to grab a guy and drag him under the cubicle, and that's that's all we see at this point. But we and uh, we and all of a sudden the kids. The next day though, it's quite funny. All of a sudden, boom, lockdown. The cops are there and, uh, straight away. We've got Tom Sawyer he's running up to the building, and like and the guy saying, "What have we got going on?" And his partner's there, and he's like, "Oh, this is what's going on." Blah, 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 and explain it, and I, I was straight away. It's like, "Oh shit." I can't remember this right. Is this? Did the kids die? And because and I, I, for some reason, I don't know why, I've just seen the security guard get killed. But I was like, oh no, did the kids die as well? And they're there for that because that's been like fucking no. But no, a security guard of a museum has had his head pulled clean off. Yeah, because the kids also. That's uh, not a normal murder, is it? While, while the kids are trying to find out their way out that same night. They hear the same breathing coming from up the top of the a flight of stairs. Yeah, and that's where we And they run away. Yeah, yeah. And but in the morning, you see them being comforted. Um, you know, and they're going to get a severe telling off from their parents and the school. But they're not. They're not in anywhere near as much trouble as the man who had his head ripped off in the public toilets. Fuck no! And it's a, it's a, obviously a massive crime scene, and um, everyone's there. Forensics are there, and they're all just checking it all out. They find, this, the, find the joint bar, you know, and all this sort of stuff. Um, well, that, just going back a little bit, this also demonstrates again how Dr. Greg is a, a massive prick because when Margot arrives, she's like, what's going on? And he's like, <laughs> didn't you hear? Someone was murdered last night. And she's like, what? And he's like, yeah, they haven't said who it is yet. So it could have been her. He doesn't know who it is. He just is excited because someone was murdered in the, the museum. He's like, maybe it's Colonel Mustard with the uh, the hammer and the uh, He's drawer. A or what, and he just sort of says a joke, and she's like, "What? What is that? Is that too early? What are you thinking? What are you thinking?" Yeah. Well, um, she goes in and she's sort of storming around like, oh, "I'm a, I'm Doctor Green. Get out of my way! I've got to get Tom to my Tom Sizemore's like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! Where, where are you going, love? What are you, what are you doing?" And uh, she's like, no, I've got to get to my office. You'll be allowed to your office when we've swept the building, but somebody's been killed. She then... 
She's just goes walking in there. She later, the on blame, later on blames him for not shutting the door. No, it's the crime scene. There's it's only also one the woman there. All the police in there. The crime scene's going to be in there. You're the one who's fucking stu- done it, you stupid cow. So she walks in and she does see her friend Frank, the security guard's head on one side of the room, his body on the other, and blood all up the wall. Um, and yeah. apparently the brain was out of the, the skull as well. So she got a lovely little sight there first thing in the morning. That'll wake you up, won't it? Wake you up more than coffee. Hmm. Um, so yeah, Margo, uh, Margo's not very happy about that. No, and um, Dr. Cuthbert's a bit pissed with this uh, because she's like, yeah, this is our grand opening. We can't be having this place shut down. What are you going to do about it? And Tom Sawyer's was trying to explain to her like what, what the score is, you know. Yeah, he's like, this museum is absolutely massive. There's multiple floors, multiple... You've got like, to lock it down. There's there's so many rooms, rooms that some of them have never, probably never been in because at one point towards the end where she's running around, the curator says, do you know where we're going? And she's like, I'm lost. Because museums are so big that people are only responsible for certain areas. You can never know an entire museum. Yeah, it's massive, you know, isn't it? They're ridiculously huge. And Tom Sizemore thinks and says to his buddy, this is a bit like that head on that ship, isn't it? It's ripped off again. That's a bit strange. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah uh, as long as well, already got his detective head. In. He's got his dick head on, basically. <laughs> and uh, right. um, uh, so he goes to see Marg. I don't know why, though, he does. He, I guess he's being very thorough, but he does seem to, sort of, my own feeling, spend a bit too much time with well, Margot the, doing, looking at the wrong things, though, because he, he could be on a wild goose chase. He should be at that moment then going around the bloody museum with everyone else. It's such a big museum. But that's museum. because there's a reason that he's a detective and he was the last person to sign out of the museum, don't forget. So he's not necessarily suspecting her, but he just needs to double check what she saw, if she heard or saw anything, because she was the last person to sign out of the museum. So he just wants to know. And she did hear a funny noise. She says, I heard, I heard a noise, but nothing else. I so guess. that's why. But he, yeah, she shows him around her lab and he's kind of interested, but he doesn't really get what she does. And uh, he, he sees some beetles, which come back into play later on. He sees a big tank that they use to melt the flesh off of bones. Um, and then they use the flesh and they feed that to the beetles. And they obviously use the bones then, I guess, to put up as an, an exhibit or something. So she kind of gives him a bit of a behind the curtains peep of you know what goes on behind the backstage of a, a museum. Yeah. Um, he says, oh, What's, who's, what about Dr. Whitney? What do you know about him? Because his office was vandalised, as well as this killing. His office seems to be vandalised. She says, what do you mean? He says, well, it's all smashed up. And she says, oh, OK, that's a bit weird. Uh, he says, do you think this could be drug-related? Do you think, he, you know, he could have sent drugs to the museum? She's like, no, there was nothing in the museum except for le- in the crates apart from leaves, and they've all been incinerated. Mm. So I don't think there's anything to do with drugs. You know, he's a very good guy. Interesting. So he still thinks this could be something to do with a drug cartel. You know, maybe this doc, this uh, John, uh, whatever his face is, um, is something to do with that. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, the, meanwhile, we talk about this, the relic. And the relic, they, they say, is a chimera, which is <clears throat> it's based on a god. And a chimera, for anyone that doesn't know, I'm sure all of our listeners do, is... Um, a mutation or an amalgamation of different animals in one so like a griffin for example is a chimera because it's got like the head of an eagle the body of a lion the tail of a snake wings of whatever you know so you know what a chimera, a chimera is it's one of it's a lot of creatures in one i guess a unicorn <laughs> all that kind of stuff so they worshipped this chimera god what would you um, like me to be oh my god um do you know what I honestly would I've see? I've got to keep you. one part of me human. I would uh, honestly, hopefully the top part. I would see you as a centaur. Yeah, I could see that. A horse's body with your torso coming out of it. Just sat there because you sat there now. You could be a you could be a centaur. I can't see from the waist down. Thank God, I can't see from the waist down. It you is. Know. It is my little bushy bushy tail back there. That is what is down below me. I like what to, about, I prance the trot around. What about me? Trot 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 trot. If trot, I was going to be a Chimera, what what would I be merged with? Badger. I want to see, I want to see a little oh, badger you know. body. So my a normal human head on just a little badger's body. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, oh. it might be a struggle for your little neck keeping it up though. It'd be awful. I'd be sort of like 
Look could do anything. What would my kids think? They're thinking it's fun. Um, you know, they have little rides on you and stuff like, until they got too big. Then it's just be. You know, Can I still heavy. wear my flat cap when I'm a badger? Yeah, yeah. You'd be like a geezer though. I think if you saw if you saw a badger with a flat cap, he's in London markets selling you some dodgy silver or silver cutlery. <laughs> oh dear. Well, one of my favourite parts of any film. Now we cut to an autopsy scene. We all love a good autopsy. Fucking love it. And Tom Sizemore doesn't. He's struggling to not throw up. Um, but the doctor is hilarious, isn't she? The, the woman that's doing the autopsy. It's full of... She's got jokes galore, this woman. Which straight away, she's like, uh, uh, oh, someone's uh, taking head and not giving it, I see. Like... I know. And, and the other guy who doesn't say anything, her assistant. Yeah, he's probably like, oh, God. It's... And there's one bit towards the end where she says something. When you agree, and he goes, yeah. She goes, oh, he doesn't shut up, does he? She's just, like, full of jokes. She's really, really funny. And what she reveals is that um, this this head, the, the Frank, I think his name really is. Really good effects as well. It's good head cast. Yeah, so she, and she shows the head, and she says, like, the brain, the, the skull was punched through, the brain was ripped Extracted. out. Extracted. Yeah. And then she says, oh, hang on a minute. The hypothalamus gland is missing from the brain, and that is the part of the brain which houses your your dna and um uh just a few I don't, i'm not a scientist so i can't quite remember it but basically it's a very special specific part of the brain and it's missing it's been taken away and removed mm. yeah because we find out later on obviously more more things connected to this part of the brain uh pop up so there's a jigsaw puzzle forming yeah, so there's basically two puzzles. One for Tom Sizemore to do with this hypothalamus, because um, what he'll go on to do is request a, an autopsy of the bodies from the boat and find out that none of them have got an hypothalamus either. Also, the other puzzle that's been solved is by Dr. Margot. She's figuring out. Now, the next bit that she comes across is that the red fungus on the leaf is stuffed full of animal DNA. And she's like, well, that can't be. This is fungus. What's it got animal DNA, DNA in it? How has that happened? It's got lizard. It's got, you know, reptilian. It's got lizard. It's got uh, mammal. I, I don't understand how it's got... I've got to run this again. So she runs it again on her ancient 1997 computer. Which is uh, going to take a while um, to to dis decipher what the DNA is specifically from or if that's correct or wrong. But while she's doing that... Something come, crawls out on her desk, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a bug, but it's a big bug. Um, obviously, uh, it's grown while it's been in the box. Yeah, and because it, it's been eating the fungus, so yeah, she squishes it. Squish. And she's now got more to test, more um, samples and spe species uh, specimens to look at. So this is why her side of the puzzle is very important, because she's figuring it out as she goes as well. It's very mm. good stuff. Um, on her way home that day, she decides to just quickly pop in and check out the, the exhibit exhibition of superstition. She goes to see how it's going, basically, and it's the end of the night, so no one's there. It's a bit dark and a bit spooky. Yeah, and it's full of mummies and mirrors. Daddies. And <laughs> Who's your daddy? Leather daddy. Um, don't know where that came from. Who's your mummy? While she's in there, she hears. <sighs> and she thinks, what the fuck? And she, it's a really, really, really cool shot of her running back to the exit. And the camera's with her the whole way. And you really feel like you're in this labyrinth of and, stuff with and her. That's the director filming it. Really good shot, that. Um, I don't normally notice camera shots and stuff like that, but I've directed it. I know, I know what I've done. It's just a, a minuscule thing, and it's no way like a huge production. But you still got the same elements, so to speak. So I've all <clears throat> had to direct and film at the same time, and, it, and you know, it's it's you don't have the your ball, your eyes not on on the 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 cast. You just let them do it. Your eyes on making sure that camera's in focus. And I know you have focus pullers and all that shit. But it is, it's, you start to look at that, you're kind of missing it all. You're just watching it like you're watching it on a TV, do you know what I mean? You're not in there. You're looking at the outside of it when you're filming it as well. So it's very hard to direct and film. So it's very impressive when you get movies, especially shot like this. And then we end the scene with a red herring, or a fish, as you once called it, um, where she goes into the toilet. Why is it like... from the, from the toilet? It's like the, it's a security guard. But yeah, he was in there to smoke reefer, though. He's in there to... 
Um, and she goes in there, hides, and hears the breathing, and then realizes it's just the cleaner. It's the cleaner. It's just she the takes cleaner. her asthma inhaler, and she's fine again. Yeah, yeah. Do your ding bang. Uh, well, the next day, it's party day. It's time for the gala. It's it's Rest. the morning. Red carpet is being rolled out, which Tom Sizemore just straight away walks all over. And he's saying, he's still saying, look, I, I don't really think this party's going to go ahead, to be honest with you, Dr. Cuthbert. Yeah, but to be fair, like, their security guard had its head ripped off. Hmm? Uh, it is probably quite, like, they must understand the importance of the museum. It could shut the museum down if they don't get these grants, supposedly, and stuff. But, like... Like, come on. Like, but if the you... mayor and loads of famous people and the press are going to be there, do you really want a psychopath or a monster? That's what it comes down to. But this turns into, like, the Jaws thing. It's like, well, no, we can't. It's, exactly it's like the weekend. That. We can't do that. And funny enough, because of the FX being taken so long to be made by Stan uh, Winston's uh, uh, team um, and it not being shown until later in the movie, it has that Jaws, uh, Jaws element. And obviously Jaws element, the only reason the Jaws shark wasn't in the movie that much was because Bruce, the shark, was because it wasn't working that much. So it's the same sort of thing. Um, and yeah. that's why they're not showing so much. But it has this sort of Jaws tip to it. But yes, they don't want to shut this museum down. But it's like, come on, no. You should have had his head fucking ripped off, mate. Meanwhile... Two cops are in the basement. Talking about coffee. Mm -hmm. What do you mean you not had a latte? I like espresso. You should have a latte. It's very smooth. <laughs> it's just like, okay. Like, and they, they, later on, they talk They about must have come again, up with this they? themselves. I don't know if it is in the script, you know. Because later on, they talk about coffee again when they're at the party. They, oh, it's bitter. Very they try bitter. it. Yeah, this is very bitter. It's not good. They're like connoisseurs of, of coffee. coffee. Like, what is this? Like some early coffee connoisseurs. You know. I love them so much. They're great. I really want, I want to read a book just about them. Um, <laughs> they do find a bloody footprint, and it's quite a big footprint. Oh, no, this isn't those guys. This is um, two other cops. Oh, OK. Well, two cops in the basement find a bloody footprint anyway. Yeah, these are two uniform. The other ones. Oh, no. Oh, is that the same ones? No, I think I, I think they're the same ones because they're talking about coffee. Oh, no, it would be then, wouldn't it? Of course yeah. it is. Yeah, because I only I thought that because later on when it's the party, they they dress up and they're wearing suits. Because because the one was like, you know, how, how do I look? And he goes, Yeah, you look you're looking good. And he says, well, Are you sure? Because no one else here has got the frills on the shirt. And he no, says, no, he's got the ruffles. He's on like, his shirt, No, you're look, looking real cool. Yeah, but it's just like little Take bits like this. Bit. Yeah. Um, Sizemore gets a, a message to say. All the other heads were missing a hypothalamus gland as well. And he's like, what the fuck is going on? Someone's going around, taking brains out and ripping out a little section of them. What is happening? Yeah. Meanwhile, while the two cops are looking around, the breathing is shown to be coming from something moving up and down that then wakes up and crawls out. We don't really see an awful lot of this creature. It's just kept in the dark a bit. But this big creature wakes up and heads up the stairs back up to the museum. You'd, you'd think he's like a giant rat or something, you know? Yeah. Mm. That's what's kind of got that B-movie tip to it, it feels like. Tom Sizemore talks to Margot again, and they talk about John Whitney again. And this time he meets the curator, the guy in the wheelchair, really lovely, sweet old fella. And we call him Dr. Wheelchair. Doctor Wheelchair. They talk about God. They talk about Brazil, um, and he talks about the hypothalamus gland. Mm. And they're like, "Why? Why would you ask about that?" And he's like, mm, "Just put, trying to put something together here." Um, you know. We just start saying to him, "Yeah, you know, talking about the, uh, John in Brazil and what was going on there and stuff." He wants to know more about it. He thinks that John has gone possibly mad and and, and is doing the killing. Is I I think he thinks that he's, you know, got in there and he's doing the killing. He's a proper detective, his character, because detectives are interested in everything. You know, they, they want to know how everything works. So he's really genuinely quite interested in this as well, though, about the hypothalamus and about the relic and all that kind of stuff. So he is kind of like... Mm. He, he is investigating, to be fair. Um, we're back to the cops again who are down in this basement, and they're like, oh, shit, we're, we're too far deep now in the concrete to radio in, but there's like a real bad smell. And they're, they're probably like, you know, that's death. So um, they they get their guns out a bit and they creep towards a noise that they hear. They go to investigate a little bit and they get a bit spooked at something. And the the one one of the fellas, he just fucking goes to town and shoots. He unloads fucking, every bullet in his gun. 
into, a, into a homeless man. Into a homeless man. Um, but who is a convicted rapist? Apparently, they find out he is a convicted rapist, and it is very much a case of they do also find that he on his property on the, of himself. Um, he had um, uh, a watch or something or other from the boat. It was something. For, it was he had an, boat. he had an axe number one. And he also had a medallion from the boat. And then, like, so Sizemore's uh, uh, second in command's like, it's got to be this guy. It's like, obviously, it's got to be this guy. So everyone's, like, really happy about this. This dude comes down, this other detective or works with Sizemore and sort of says to him, you know, um, great, well done, we've got the man. And Sizemore's like, I I don't know about this. He says, it's too easy. It can't, you know, and they're like, hang on a minute. Are you telling me that you don't think that this guy... Did it, and Tom Sizemore says, "So you're telling me that this guy hopped on a boat in Brazil, um, killed everyone on the crew, took out the hypothalamus gland, then came into the museum, did the same to the security. Do you really think this guy did that?" And they're like, "They just want to open the museum, so they're just like, look, we've 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 solved the case, Tom Sizemore. Money, just deal money's with it. more important again." You know, it's one of those situations in life where, where money's more important than actually safety of the individuals, which happens too much for often, really. Well, here's a really annoying thing, because suddenly the mayor, who's got wind of this, gives Tom Sizemore a phone call. Well, well, the guy he said, Tom's like, I don't know about this, to the other guy, he's gone off and rang up the mayor and said, you need to talk to him, basically. So the mayor says, like, hey, who am I, who, what, who am I speaking to? What, what's your name? Right, this is the mayor. You can call me your honour. Yeah, he says, what's your name? He says... This is Lieutenant D'Augustin. He says, what's your first name? Vincent. Okay, Vincent. Do you mind if I call you Vincent? No. Great. You can call me your honour. So he's already pulling, like, rank on him. I'm the mayor, basically. And, he, and I say. Sizemore's very good. He doesn't give any shit. He, he bites says, his tongue, yeah, okay. he? he's, he's quite an obedient cop, to be fair. Which is why that scene later on when he he's says not your, he's not your, him. He's not your Bruce Willis type, you know. But there's a scene where he unloads on the mayor later on, and it's brilliant when he says that. Shut your fucking mouth and listen to me. Yeah, <laughs> so good. Um, but yeah, and this is where the mayor says, "Oh, you know, uh, um, I yeah, have you seen my wife's tits?" He said, "No, not really. No, my wife's cleavage. No, not really. Well, I don't know how not everybody in the East Coast have ever seen my wife's cleavage. Anyway, she's bought a dress tonight to wear to it, and that's why I was like, when we get to the party, I'm like, where's this missus in? Where's this cleavage? No cleavage to be seen. No cleavage. No cleavage. Well." Tom Sizemore says, here's what we're going to do. It, 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 to be fair, it is a compromise. Still, it's a bit sketchy, though, because I don't know. But He says... I'm is, do... this, is, this is Jaws again, where they catch the shark, and they go, great, this is the shark, brilliant. We've done it. And it's like, no, I don't what, th- what? <laughs> I don't think this is the shark, you know. It's that, basically. So what he says is, look, here's the compromise. I'm going to do one final sweep myself with the with the best dogs we've got on the force and i'm going to close all the outer offices and everything else apart from the main section where the exhibit and the party is happening that's the only bit and i'm going to have a massive police presence and they're like no you can't do that he's like it's either that or we don't open the museum so so he he does let the mayor have his party but he does it under very heavily you know, watch the police and they don't open much of the museum, only the main exhibit. So there's a compromise. And again, he's a good cop. He's made that decision. He's, he's, you know, he's been forced into a situation where, he, where there's potentially still somebody killing people, but he, he, he says, yeah, all right, we'll go for it. We'll go for it. So yeah. the dog starts searching and off he goes into the basement, into the depths. We'll come back to him later on. Margot starts explaining the bug, the virus, to um, Professor Wheelchair. And she says, look, it's, it's a hybrid, the fungus. It's, it's, you know, maybe it was on all the leaves that were in the shipment, you know, but they've obviously all been burnt. But these hormones, that these animal DNA and these hormones, their hormones are specifically found in dun, 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 the hypothalamus gland. Hypothalamus? Wasn't that what the doctor, uh, police chief, Mr. Bidibidu, were talking about? Yes, it was. That's exactly like the scene from the film. Perfect. Um, so the outer labs will get locked. But Dr. Greg, and I think he did this on purpose... Because they're waiting to shut down. They're locking it all down, basically. And he got out and he kept saying to Margot, look, are you going to hurry up, Margot? And she's like, don't worry, I'm going to be there. You're not going to get the money without me being there. But she's really fascinated with this stuff because 
I suppose it's trying to put her across as like more of a professional than he is. I don't know. Um, but yeah, they're locking the whole place down, and they're the last two in there. But he goes and tells them, "No, nah, it's all locked down. Well, he, I was the last overhears, one in there." He overhears the coffee cops talking about. I think we should lock it. And he goes, "Ah, oh, there's no one in there. Just go ahead and lock it." Think knowing that Margot's going to be in there, she can't get out and start trying to, you know, get her grant. Meaning he'll definitely get his grant again. So he's a little shit. Dr. Greg, he's a little shit. Yeah. So, yeah, her and Dr. Wheelchair are locked in now. I'm surprised that they let Sizemore have this police presence. Like, how much money is that going to cost the police station? The police, you know. It's not every day there's seven beheadings in a week, though. Yeah, but they think they've got the person. That's why I find it really weird that they'll still be doing it. Like, why are you still standing there? He must have a bit of clout. Yeah, I suppose. Well, the dogs lead Tom and his buddies, his cop buddies, down into the tunnels. Uh, and this is where they say, well, how far do these tunnels go? And one of them says, all the way to the docks. You know, you can follow them all the way along, two miles along, you'll end up at the docks. And he's like, so something could have jumped off a boat and potentially... And he's like, well, I guess, what, what are you talking about? And he's like, don't worry. And he just adds that to his little Columbo puzzle that he's building in his head. Our, our coffee de- detectives are still... Uh, co- or coffee cops are still uh, uh, now in their suits. And it's ruffles, is yeah. what he's wearing. Have you ever had a shirt of ruffles? I did once. No. No, um, uh, it's for it's kind of a joke. Picks it up from a charity shop. Didn't ever wear it really. Um, but yeah, ruffles. He says, oh. "Are you sure I look cool? Oh, I don't see anybody else in here with ruffles." <laughs> One time I did actually was when I went to a fancy dress party dressed as Austin Powers many years ago. But that was a fancy dress. It wasn't a real shirt. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're about to have a dog get killed here, aren't we? This film flies along, you know. It really does. It trucks. Um, they smell a bad smell, which is related to the creature, as we know. And the dogs seem like they're interested in whatever's happening off in the dark. And they run off into the darkness, and you hear that... It's uh, like first blood. It's that dog getting killed. And the dog man, the owner, the dog, dog handler... Man. <laughs> the dog handler, he's like, my dogs! And he runs off into the dark. Like Rambo. <laughs> And um Well first blood should I say. Tom follows him and the dog the dog handler gets killed. Mm. And we see the shadow of a huge creature. And Tom heads down into the deepest part of the tunnel now, right as far as you can go, right to the bottom of the museum, right deep underground. He sees the dead bodies before he smells them, which is weird. And he sees not just one, not just two, probably about it's a nest. It's, it's a nest of skulls and bro- brains and bones and rib cages. Yeah. And he's like, oh, for fuck's sake, but my he, gut instinct was correct. He does find a dog, and it's a real one of those points where you're both like, oh, thank fuck, you both found each other. This bromance between him and the dog is pretty it's good. It's just they're both there, and they're both like, and she, the dog just licks his face, and like normally you don't really want a dog like you. And you go, Ugh. But and he, at that point, yeah, it's like... You're both so he's so happy to see you just lick his face, and the dog's so happy to see you just gonna lick his face, and it's like, oh, good bit of acting from you both there. And this, the way he looks for the next few scenes with an Alsatia, a German Shepherd, and a shotgun in the other hand, he just looks along. badass. With, with a trench coat, it feels like a sort of noir detective. That's yeah. why I guess this is why these novels, you know, it's a shame they've not made any other movies from these books. Yeah, badass. Well, the guests, meanwhile, the guests upstairs are being shown around the exhibit. You know, so here's Tutankhamun, here's whatever, you know, th- this is superstition in one culture. This is a ladder. Don't walk under it or do you? And they kind of talk about all the different superstitions from all around the world. So that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool looking exhibit, to be honest with you. I'd probably go and see that. I'm, I'm interested in that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they're shown around. And then all of a sudden... A bit um, of blood drips on the guest. I love it when a bit of blood drips on somebody from a tree or a ceiling. Oh, oh, yeah, we, uh, I'm doing that, that next short film that I'm doing, Dan, very Ooh. much soon. We're doing that, actually. Ooh. Well, she's sort of like, what is that? Dripping on a then... helmet, but that sounds wrong. But I could just leave that as that is. <laughs> it's your birthday. You can drip on a helmet if you want. Blood dripping on a helmet. Oh, God, not blood. Um, this blood dripping on this lady's shoulder in this museum it it turns out it's a body that falls down onto a load of spears in front of everybody yeah yeah and this is where the the other detective who was with sizemore his his second command uh basically uh, who's been 
told by Sizemore, get the fuck back there with the other guy. They run back there. He runs at just that moment and says, everybody, we got to get the fuck out of here now. And this is an incredible scene now where there's a stampede of it's people a, in very expensive it, suits and dresses. Yeah, hectic, hectic alarms going off, like electricity's going down. It's just people craziness. People getting thrown through windows. And then when Water they finally sprinklers. get out... Some of them get out, but they sort of fall down the stairs. And get crashed, get crashed uh, crumpled yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a few of the select few people are, get stuck in the museum because they lock it down. Well, the security guard are upstairs, uh, uh, and they're just thinking the whole place is being robbed. Every It says everything's being robbed at one point. It says, says we're having earthquake. an earthquake. Yeah. It's because it's because everyone's running at once, and they've not had that much pressure, sensitive pressure, I presume, on those floorboards like that before. Well... Sadly, not only is the museum then put into lockdown... Because it's automatic lockdown because they think it's a robbery or something like that. But they also... That means that the power has been... Well, the power gets cut. We find out later on how the power is cut. And, and sprinklers turn on and it's just like a bit like, oh, shit, this isn't a good good situation at all. That woman gets caught in the revolving doors. That looks painful. Yeah. I'm always a bit wary of revolving doors. Yeah. Don't want to get caught in them. Um... Yes, the power cut. We find out later on that the power has been cut by the creature because uh, two guys who run the sort of the electrics and the how security. Did, how did they do that? I don't know, but Tom Sizemore goes in there and he's like, no, one of the guys goes in there and says, oh, the fuck did this? And then he goes back to his buddy in the chair and he says, ah, something's ripped straight through all the power. And then the guy's head just flops back like the vicar from uh, Brain Dead when his head just goes... <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, so the monster must have some uh, human brain of, of of knowing what's about and shit it, to do it, that. We find out that it once was human a bit later on. But, again, we're jumping ahead. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, a few get left in there, including the mayor and his wife and a few other people. They're left in the museum. And Greg, who wants his grant, and he's kissing their ass. He's been kissing the mayor's ass all night. Anytime the mayor makes a joke, he's like, ha, 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 ha. He was even practicing his speech upstairs before the party, wasn't he? He was saying, I didn't know you had a daughter. And he was going to say things about his wife. The, the expression, oh, why don't you lick his arse? Like, he probably would. If he said, yeah. like, go on, lick my arse. If you like, want the grant. He'd probably go, okay. He would. He, he would. wants that grant. He wants that grant so badly. Oh. Um, so this is where he, Tom Sizemore, gives his... John McLean speech to the mayor. And he says, with all due respect, sir, shut the fuck up and listen to everything I'm going to tell you. Because he radios back to his second-in-command who's up there. He passes the con- uh, the walkie-talkie to the mayor. That's how we're still doing this, because he's still down in the basement. Yeah, but it's, it's an awesome scene, and he really rips the mayor a new one and says, like, if you want to live to- through tonight, you do every fucking thing I say, and you yes. follow you follow my, my lieutenant. And they class it as a crawl space. It's not a crawl space, because they walk through it. Yeah, but it's not very nice, though, is it? No, 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 but it's not cool, I suppose. But some of them can't do it. Some of them are just like, well, we can't do this. We've got this group, basically a group, of sprinklers going off, there's power like that. They've got a killer monster going around, which we know of, and some of them are just like, we can't do this, we're too old. We're, like, we're carry you. And it's like, we can't carry you. So, And then, then one is licking ass. He's just like, oh, I'll stay as well. So then it's like, oh, for God's sake. And then, so the second in command's like, one of you cops has got to stay, one of the coffee cops, you got to stay here. And that's when they have their bromance, like, have you got enough, have you got enough ammo? Oh, I have. I and it's just that, so and that's silly. it, though. But it's not more, any more of that. And so it should be a bit more, I feel like, you know. A, a longing look. But it maybe. means when he gets killed, a little, the coffee cop a little, gets killed. A little lick of the lips or a little... But it means when that coffee cop gets killed, by the creature, we're like, oh man, yeah, your, your it adds is, more weight your, to it. Your partner's going to be very upset. Um, there's a great moment where you'd kind of forgotten about Dr. Margot and the curator in the wheelchair, and Tom hears something on the other side of a door and he opens it, and it's Margot and the curator, and he's like, oh shit, wow, we bumped into each other. This is brilliant. Because they've handy. been. They've been running around trying to find their way yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, The doors are locked. The, the second command, he, he says what he's got to do, and he goes up to the bit where about to leave, and he shouts at them to be quiet. I love it. <laughs> Shut up, be quiet. We've got, we've got to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, Margot tells Tom about the DNA, and he basically... She describes to him, there's probably a creature in here that's made up of, and she names a bunch of animals, and he just sort of says, 
yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I've seen some weird shit tonight. Um, that would probably make sense. So, um, the fire department arrive outside. Um, we, we actually see the monster as well um, at this period. And this is at 1 hour 16 minutes into the movie. First seeing the monster properly. And that's right, because it starts ramming the door, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and some blood trickles under it. She gets some of the blood and she does a test on that. And yeah. she finds out... This is where she finds out it once was human. It started off as human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, run, it bum rushes at the door towards him in the corridor and Tom Sawyer's will managed to shut the door just in time. Um, yeah, totally. They do discover that, that it was actually once a human. Fucking hell, yeah. that is a bit of a transformation. That must have been painful. Pretty fucking painful, I would say. Well, the fire department are trying to cut a hole in the wall. Um, I half expected the Statue of Liberty to turn up at this point, but the Ghostbusters driving it um, yeah. to try and you know break in. But um, the fire department managed to get in. They didn't need the Ghostbusters. So that I still, was I still love to have a movie where you could just pick everything you wanted. Like I want John McClane as well as the Ghostbusters, and they all work together in a movie. I'd love to do that. You could pick all other people. Indy, Indy does a little bit there, and. Oh. Michael Knight's going to swing by with Kit and then the oh. A-team are going to flow in and it's an actual movie without all the actors do you know what I mean? That'd been so good If only. Well I'm sure at some point in the future with AI yeah. you can probably do that Yeah, 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 totally and VR but we can talk about that, that Creepshow episode when we get onto the Horror Express um, That This is where we first see the creature proper now kill people on camera It dives down into the crowd of people, the small crowd of people that are in the museum. And the monster looks so fucking cool. It looks really it's cool. just like the coolest fucking thing. It's slimy. It's just, oh my God. It, um, it's got a it, slight predator type face, a, a little bit of it, the man, man the balls, is, is it? Yeah, it, it kills a few people in the lobby. Pra some practical effects that are looking great. And there's one scene which, although there's definitely some CGI it's the only way they could have done it, where it picks it's up that guy, and then, guy. No, 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 no. It's, oh. it's where it picks up that guy and then oh, pulls his head, head off. Yeah. And it's a bit like that bit where um, uh, Bishop gets ripped in half in Aliens. It's just yeah. like, whoa, that looks so good. And, yeah, I get it with CGI, but it still holds up quite well. That it's scene. not too bad. It's not too bad. Yeah. Um, Greg gets killed. Yay! Dr. Greg, fuck off. Uh, yeah, this, this SWAT come through the roof and one oh. goes down and basically gets, says, pull me back up, pull me back up, well, which I would as on, well. Hang on, hang on, let's back up, back up. because So the SWAT come down and the first one that comes through the window on the, on the rope, the creature just jumps up, grabs it and just eats him. Yeah. The other guys don't know this, so they're still sending in the rest of the one's swap. getting sent down. He's like, I'm getting sent down to a monster who's just popped up and ate the other one. I don't know what the fuck that is. My instinct is, get me the fuck back up now. This is now, you're dangling down some adults, some humans on strings for this monster. And he's like, oh, the monster's like, oh, great. Some more food's coming down here for me. And then the guys, like you said, they start realising, hang on a minute, something's down there eating. Oh, pull us up, pull us up. That one guy. Gets, who, they, they put him up because it comes easier to pull up. Because he's got nothing from the waist he's down. He's half the man he was before when he went down. And we've seen that in movies before, but it's it still works. It's still fun. And this is where we see uh, Dr. Wheelchair see the monster face to face. And he gives it a really nice little, like, oh, look at you. You're, I've never seen you. You're like a new discovery. Wow. And smiles well, longingly at it. It's a bit like the guy in Alien Resurrection. Um... Uh, who's doing the experiments, you know, Chucky, the voice of Chucky. Right, um, riff. Yeah, it's a bit like when he... Because he's kind of a bit into his creature that he's experimenting on. And it's, and it's the same with the Doctor, you know, he believes in all these myths, and he's like, well, if I'm going to get killed, at least it's going to be by a big, massive creature from Brazil that, you know, I've kind of studied the history of. So, hello! And yes, indeed, he uh, he gets... Well, we don't see it, that he gets killed off camera. Margot thinks that she could probably freeze... There's a freeze coming, uh, the monster. Using uh, nitro, liquid nitrogen. And she also says, if we grab the leaf or some of the leaves that are left, we might be able to attract it because it's got that fungus on it, that DNA on it. So they grab it. They grab the, the tank of nitrous, um, of whatever it's called, liquid nitrogen, and they grab some leaves. Have you seen a ghost in your house recently? No, why? Just thought so. No. 
since we did that AI picture thing, the presence seems to have sort of lifted almost. Okay. It's strange, you know, and the kids now aren't sleeping in our room anymore. So we sleep with our bedroom door open, whereas we used to shut the door, but it feels fine now. Oh, good. It's weird. It's really strange. It seems to have lifted. But yeah, thanks for asking. I had a little bit over my shoulder then when you asked. I thought, well, why I was wondering was... who that person was. Ah! Dun, dun, dun. Um, anyway, they get the leaves, they get the tank of liquid nitrogen. They go into the tunnel. Yeah, the guys are in the tunnels. Um, and and the other guys in the tunnels, they're in the water tunnel, and this is going to got that sort of, like, alligator-y type sort of tip. You're going through water, and you don't know what's just underneath you, and one, yeah. of, the, one of the crew, it's one of the other coffee cops, isn't it? They do it in one of the alien movies as well, and the water's chest height, and these guys are all wading through it, and you see some bubbles here, you see a movement under the water there. It yeah. is, it's the coffee, cup, uh, coffee yeah. cup, isn't it? Oh, and he dies, he shouldn't have died. So both of them are dead now, together, I don't think reunited. They have I don't think he should have died. Gav, they'll be drinking coffee in heaven together, because oh. they're good guys. Oh. I love that we've called them the coffee cops. Coffee That's cops. who they are. Um, yeah, uh, the cop gets dragged underwater, um... And lots of people to start getting killed all over the place at this point. It's going to be pretty sketchy. Just, it's real scary though, isn't it? Um, meanwhile, just behind them, Tom and Margot are on their trail and they enter the tunnel. Another thing Tarantino said about this, I think it's Richard Avery, I think that's the other guy who does the podcast with. I think they said another thing, they really wanted these two to hook up. Uh, no, I, I don't think. I think it's so cliche when the the guy and the girl hook up. Yeah, well, I think it was like that they don't see this, but they kind of like would like to think that. I think that they went on to hook up. I don't really got. I didn't really get any chemistry between them. They no, were, I didn't. I found this really strange. That it's Tarantino saying this. I, like, I, don't I know. think they re- they respected it's not each what other. I, not what I pick up from the film. I think they're both very stubborn and they respected each other in that one's an expert in their field, the other's an expert in their field, and they resolve this case, obviously, spoiler alert, together, but I don't think they hook up. I think they're just... No. They might they might stay in contact, and, but in 1997, they might email each other occasionally. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Fancy he, he's, coffee? he's not going to email. He's going to be doing, like, all cop stuff. Yeah, and also, he's really not into women anymore. Like, after getting divorced from his wife and he's lost his dog, he's like, fuck women! He's going to be just going down the strip joint and <laughs> get, getting, getting the odd wank off behind it, I think, for a while. Why? That's it. On his fake penis. Bitter. He's just going to get bitter like the coffee they drank. Bitter like the coffee. Um, so they, they, they pin these leaves to uh, an underwater, a gate under the tunnel to attract the, the creature. And when it comes near them, they spray it. And it does sort of slow it down a bit. The, it doesn't the, freeze it, There's a bit where the Margot um, does get the DNA results come in. She's near a computer at one point. Well, this is it, yeah. She she goes back up to her office, and she's got that bloody sound effect so that when Car something's crashed. finished downloading, it goes... <laughs> and it comes up with DNA. It's very old. It's very 90s. DNA of John Whitney. Is the monster! What? He's the monster! What the fuck? Crazy. Uh, just as that happens, the monster smashes through the ceiling. Um, it chases Margot down the corridor full of doors, which is a great, quite a heart-pounding moment because she's running down, and every time she gets through a door, two doors behind the wall just exploding as the monster's running through. Now, this, I believe, Gav, was homaged in one of the few Marvel films you've seen uh, the first Avengers movie, uh, where Hulk um, transforms and he's chasing Black Widow, Scarlett Hansen, down the corridor, mm-hmm. and he's smashing through the walls, and she's trying to keep ahead of him. It feels like I they almost the relic in that. Yeah, <laughs> because that bit, that bit got my heart pounding, and it did in this as well, because she's only a few doors ahead of him, and every couple of doors, the wall crashes through, and she's pulling shelves over. She's, you know, she's breaking well, bottles because she's got a plan, basically. She's a scientist, and she knows what every single one of these chemicals does. So she pours all these chemicals down, all these highly flammable chemicals, all over the floor. Um, and then she very quickly, like Stephen Seagal with the microwave and the bomb in it, in uh, Under Siege. Well, before that, she has a Sigourney Reaver alien moment where they're face to face and she gets licked by a big tongue. 
Now, this is John Whitney, so he might recognise her. I think this is the human bit of him still. Like, he knew to go to the museum through the tunnels. He knew that. He knew to break the electricity, you know, the fuse box, whatever the And also, was. that licking of he that tongue... He knew to lick her. Yeah, but he started licking right on her cleavage and then worked his way up. So he is a bit sexual, and she's like... Aah. It's funny you say Sigourney Weaver, because it's also a bit of a Linda Hamilton moment, because she, while that's happening... Yeah. It's a bit of an end of the Terminator, the very There's first a lot Terminator of, movie. There's a lot of movies in this film. Yeah, she steps onto a little lift, and I can't remember if she has a line or she says something, but she just, as the lift goes down, she puts this jar of chemicals in its mouth and or breaks it, and it's all highly flammable, and the creature gets caught on fire, and she manages to run away. But the creature is still alive, mm. on fire. Now, this is, for me, the... You mentioned the CGI. For me, everything holds up until this end moment because they Walking still down the stairs. they couldn't do CG, the CGI fire, and they still struggle now. Really, yeah, uh, it didn't look that good. But I don't, I can completely forgive it at this point because Chris, I've had such a good time. Christopher Nolan in his new films made a, an actual nuclear bomb apparently for it. What the fuck? Because he likes to have realism. Just get a real nuclear bomb. No, Chris. No, no it's they fine. made Trust one. Me. I, they, I made the Batman movies. I think Come they on. fused a, a bomb. That's fucking. Or mean. they, or they containedly uh, uh, exploded it as well, or something like that. Well, my notes here say that Doctor Margot creates a science bomb because she is a scientist and she knows. <laughs> Mic drop, Dan. Science bomb. Um, anyway, she. That could be your hip hop science show that you have, like on Channel Five of an afternoon. Science bomb. With Dr. Dan. This week I'll be teaching you all about DNA. <laughs> um, the fire guys outside, by the way, the fire brigade have cut through. Just a bit late, but they've, they're in. They're in the museum now, and that's fine. They're just going to find loads of dead SWAT guys, is all they're going to find. Hanging from ropes. A leg here, a head there. Yeah. The creature comes from Margot. That's what she says when it licks her. She says, "I know who you are." Yeah. Um, when it does walk down the stairs, it did remind me of Battle Cat. Oh, it just got me semi erect there. <laughs> so we've got to say it's Battle Cat, isn't it? He <laughs> man. But yeah, she manages to run downstairs, get in that water tank, boom, monster explodes, game yep. over. Into pieces, little pieces. Um, and it's a great moment at the end where Tom Sizemore and the cops come in. And they're like, what's going on? What's going on? And you hear like a banging on the inside. And he's like, open that up. Yeah, yeah, totally. We, we, and it's, it's, it's her there. And she's like, he's like, are you all right? You know, so it's, like, it's, it's quite nice. And you do get outside. The, the mayor says to another detective, like, you leave Sizemore alone. He's been all right. And that's about it, really. Nothing else. It's not yeah, as says, good as alone, like... Or you'll be working the beat before you know it. It's like, like this mayor was kind of, I don't know, it's, it's a bit of weird choices. It's not as good as things like, say, Die Hard, where we get a lot more going on with these sort of characters outside. You know, it's a lot more tongue-in-cheek to it. And stuff. It's a bit bland. Here, it but ends yeah, that, you know. very abruptly. Um, yeah. He finds her in the tank. The mayor says his little bit. And then we get the shot of the museum and the credits roll. And you're like, oh, okay. So, yeah, it does end very abruptly. Probably the only thing I would say, the bad thing I would say about this film, it is I really holds up my last lyric. Well, my the last monster's lyrics. dead. monster's dead. The film ends. Exactly. Mm -hmm. My last note say there. this film holds up very, very well, and it, I think it does. Uh, I was quite happy, actually, getting my Blu-ray copy, watching it on HD, uh, in HD. Um, yeah, it all still holds up. The camera work still works. I was really happy those blacks were resolved from the, the, the DVD transfer. Um, yeah, it's a good film. Um, I'm quite happy to have that in my collection. And, I think what, what... and on a rainy day, I might be like, oh, I'm going to put the relic on. I think it's a triple threat, this film. There's three things that make it stand above a lot of other films particularly films from this era creature features those three things are the creature yeah yeah the the characters and as we've discussed not just the main characters every character in this is written well whether you're a security guard a coffee cop whatever you are even dr greg you know everybody in this is written very very well and it all just feels very organic and real yeah absolutely 
And the third thing is the story. It's quite original. Yeah, okay, maybe we've seen something like this before, but it's an original story. It keeps you guessing. And I'd actually forgotten, this is the first time I'd watched this in about 10 years, I'd forgotten it was Dr. John Whitney um, who was the original, you know, what the creature started off as. So kept me guessing, um, even having seen this, probably probably watched this about 20 times in my life. No, you know, I, agree. I, I own it. Yeah, I had the same sort of thing. I was like, I can't really remember what totally is who it is really I had to sort of have a little thing so yeah I really like this movie I give it a thumbs up but like I said Sarah's bored of it and I can I can see that if this isn't your sort of thing yeah maybe maybe there are some slower parts there is a lot of it is a two hour back movie back in the basement with someone looking back it's, in the basement with someone looking I guess but... one location her problem was not seeing the monster enough but like I said I, unfortunately it wasn't made in time so that to shoot it because of budget reasons yeah well, loved it, and I'm really glad you picked it. Um, it's not one that I'd ever thought really we'd talk about on the show. I hadn't ever; it was never on the list, really. But it's a film that I, I love and you love, and that's what these birthday episodes are about. So it, thank you, I loved it. These episodes, oh, you're welcome. These episodes, I'm glad you liked it. These episodes give us a chance to actually do those things, and I like to like go through the the ones from my collection because. I like to think now I've refined my collection enough now to the point where they're just films that I like. Most of them I could probably go, yeah, I'll watch that. Do you know what I mean? I, yeah. I really started just getting rid of them. I was like, I said, they're good horror movies. And some of them like, they're all right horror movies, but I'm not going to watch them. So I started getting rid of the stuff. So like, yeah, it's nice to go out of my collection and go, oh, what have we not seen? What, oh, I do like that movie, you know. Yeah. Excellent. Anyway, Horror Brilliant. Express, though, <laughs> but yes. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Before I do that, let me just pull this sheet off this... Uh... I've forgotten all about this. Look at there it. We go. Look, Look at the it. time machine. It's all shiny still. You've given a good polishing, haven't you? Well, I've been got my kids to polish it up over the last couple of days. No, um, child uh, slave labour. Yeah. It's like a sweatshop. Yeah. I paid them in uh, biscuits. So, step in to the time machine, Gav. Okay. Oh, Happy okay. birthday to you. It's got bigger it's like the TARDIS isn't it I've had an extension put on it is that a conservatory yep there's a little table and chairs over there is that a back garden yeah well, that's incredible how have you made a back garden so it's like, like it's TARDIS technology as you how say how have you got sunshine out in the back garden don't I just don't understand have you got your own ecosystem in here yep it's fantastic it's, it's the TARDIS incredible this is the new and improved Time team time machine. Right, sit yourself down. Here right. we go. Yeah. Oh, where am I sitting? That is shit, though. You have not improved the seats at all. That's I like know. a big dildo chair. How am I supposed to sit on that? Well, there's only one way you can. I'll but you sort can of sit round it. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay, I'm in. Right, let, let me buckle you in. You ready for this? I'm going to press the like button. a seatbelt, this big dildo. <laughs> Fucking hell, we're going back to 2022. Are you ready for this? Oh! Whoa! What's this machine? This is my time machine. Your yeah. time machine? Yeah. For the next five minutes, we are going to be the Time Team. The Time Team! Whoa! Whoa. What's this? Look at that! Look at that! Oh, he's been dead a hundred years! Look at that! Look at that! That's the Statue of Liberty coming out of the sand. Whoa, there's a dinosaur! <laughs> oh my god, look at that! It's something else. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. That wasn't too bad. It's only because we only went one year back, you see. Ah. So it's not too bad. Uh, here we are, Gav, 2022, the I year know. that was. Just looking out the window here, it doesn't look that different. No, not really. It was only about a week ago, really. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but take a look around, soak it in, hmm. and I'll run through. First of all, as always, for anyone who's never heard uh, us do our time team, what we tend to do is just give you a picture of what the, the, the year was like so i'll just run through some news events and pop culture events then we look at sort of the, the films the general films are right and then the main meat of what we've come back in time for is the horror films that came out in 2022 so here we go so things that happened in 2022 first of all we talked about ai earlier hmm. ai it's become this thing. It can write a song for you. It can write a script for you. It can create pictures and cartoons. And it's pretty fucking weird, Gav. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't looked into it too much. I know you do pictures and that. I, I, yeah, I haven't... 
Like you can feed in descriptions feed of. Feed where though? Where is it? I feel like there, someone there, who's never just discovering the internet. There's apps and there's websites you can go on. Um, so there's one, for example, one that's close to my heart is He Man. That someone's fed in all the He Man characters, and it's created. What if He Man was made as an '80s film, but with a big budget? Or they've done what if the Marvel films were made in the '80s, like in the style of um, Blade Runner? And there's even like a John Carpenter-esque score that the that the AI has created to go over the top of this trailer. It's just a bit weird for me. After looking, is there like loads of YouTube trailers then for AI things, like yeah, made-up yeah. movies? Yep. That sounds amazing. I could Images, just do a binge on that. And this is what you were saying earlier that a film that you could just you wish you could probably type in the A Team meets Mike, Michael Knight meets Ghostbusters and John McLean, and it would churn out. You know, someone typed in Adam Sandler starring in The Shining, and it came out with all these images of Adam Sandler, but in The Shining, and it's just weird. Like, you can just make it do anything. Wow. I think it's a. I think it's a bit scary. Okay. Because it's going to take over. Well, it, it's that sort of thing. As soon as we started getting like um, special effects and things, it's, you start to not in movies being so heavy special effects. You know, like superhero movies and things like that. You start to not like appreciate stuff. That's why Christopher Nolan's like, like you. This is unique. What I'm doing. I'm you know no effects whatsoever. It's in camera, but you start to sort of not embrace it as much when you do see something which is quite impressive because you're like well, I suppose it could be not on or it is effect or it could not be effect is it green screen I don't know do you know what I mean you don't, if you watch a movie in the 70s you're like there's I watched a movie the other day and I was like fuck me look at the stunts in there that dude just fucking must have really hurt himself <laughs> you know things like that yeah I know like when you watch a Jackie Chan film from the early 80s yeah, you're like, you're like he just threw himself off a building there <laughs> yeah so like when you start having this AI music and stuff you're like is this is I don't know is this made by computer or is it made there's by... an AI there's an AI rapper out there who's what? got a record deal there's an AI singer there's there's AI out there like, it's like Black Mirror you know it's it's just weird. I, I fucked around with it uh, a little bit. I typed in lyrics, and it wrote me a rap song. Um, there's a, there's a, Could um, we make a woman like in Weird Science, mean you wear bras and that? I'm not sure if it would do that yet. It would probably make images of and videos of, but not on action. Kelly LeBrock wouldn't turn up. Mm. And have a shower of us. She is a right pedo in that one. She is incredibly hot. She is a pedo, though. She is Showering a pedo. with a couple of teenage boys. Well, moving away from AI, there was, but sticking with computer technology of sorts, there was a game that everyone was playing on their phone all through 2022, and people are still playing it now, and that's Wordle. Never heard of it. Are you absolutely fucking kidding me? It's got words. Yeah. Basically, every morning, you, everybody who plays it is sent a puzzle. It's the same puzzle, and you've got to try and guess the word in six letters... I think it's six letters in as little goes as you can. I've never heard um, of it. Yeah, well, that kind of doesn't surprise me, to be honest with you. No. Uh, but that was the biggest thing. So, for anyone who wants to think about 2022 fondly, you probably play Wordle at least once, apart from Gav. Um, the Queen died, Gav. Never heard Queen, of Queen Elizabeth II. The longest serving, whether you're a royalist or not a royalist, and I'm not a royalist, but I always thought the royal family were interesting in some ways. But she was, and probably will always be, the longest serving monarch ever, because no one is ever going to be in on the throne for that long mm. ever again. No, it's a crazy long time, wasn't it? It absolutely insane, and obviously private health care. That's how you know. She stayed alive as long as she did, but 70 years. Well, when you think the royal family, you kind of think of her face, her little Chevy Chase, don't you? You what? Her little Chevy Chase. Oh, right, yeah, you do. Well, we're soon going to have Charlie all over our notes, aren't we? Yeah, I don't know. Hey! I, I, think just... <laughs> I don't know, it feels like... Uh, I, don't, I almost don't know if we really need a royal family. Well, I don't think we do, but I think... And I feel like it, she was the face of it. And it's a bit I think like... what you need to remember is that the royal family isn't what it was 50 years ago. It's not It's not about that. It's just 
a tourist attraction. It brings money coming in. It's so all in. Yeah. I don't look at the news anymore, but it's just completely in the news all the time now. And it's a bit like, oh, I'm glad I don't read all this. I don't want to get bothered by all this shit putting it in my brain. I don't. No, I don't care who's wrote a book about who and what. Just, who cares? Well, look, the Queen died, and we'll, we'll move on from that. Yeah. Something else that's sad that happened was that many states in the US decided. Let's oh, ban abortion. abortion. Let's take a massive step back. It just, just come on. Like, what, what is going on there? And if, and if it's because of God, like, get off your high horse. Do your right idea. Who knows why? Um, we also had the hottest year on record in the UK. Yeah. It got up to over 40 degrees. It was unbearable at times. Um, that's global warming. <laughs> it's yeah. a real thing. No matter what Trump says, it's a real thing. And yeah, all over the world, there were record temperatures. There were forest fires. Um, it wasn't a very good summer in that respect. It was nice, but it was too hot. I can't take that kind of heat. It would be uh, personally. It was only like really two days. Um, of the, the, the when it's mega mega like oh my god I can't move <laughs> hot luckily I found um the rest of the month as hot they were warm leading up to that but uh, we had like those two days of fucking hell yeah another bit of bad news and something that was quite scary but at the beginning of 2022 that happened in February was that Russia decided. Let's go to war. Twenty twenty two. It's good. You got lots of twos in there. It should sound quite cool in there. It should be like a nice year. It just wasn't really, was it? No. It just felt worse and worse. I know we're still in January. I was about to say, oh, we yeah, it's actually birthday. Um, we we um, it's still early days in that of this year. But I don't know. Last year just flew by, and it just seemed a lot of just shit, shit, shit. It's like, oh god, where are we going? This what is what's happening in this simulation of which we call world and life. I tell you what, it wasn't a good year if you were uh, Chris Rock either, was it? Well, actually, I think it probably was because I think it actually did my favor. Not fa he didn't need a favor, but I think it fucking highlighted a lot of things, especially fucking ridiculousness of Will Smith, who I have literally no respect for anymore. At right, all. easy. I don't have any respect for him at all now. I'm starting to, uh, I'm starting to forgive him a little bit. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't condone violence, but no, it's just losing your shit on TV. You, your job is a, to represent yourself, and he's done. You seen, he's done so well in the interview to... with him. Nah, nah. yeah, he's they've basically got some poor mental health. Um, it's not an excuse for violence, no. of course. No, it's, it's, yeah. it's just you losing your shit that, like that. For anyone who doesn't know what I'm talking about, and you were living under a rock in 2022, Will Smith decided to get up on stage at the Oscars in front of billi literally billions of people and slap Chris Rock it was a, a joke, a shit joke about his wife. It was a good morning. I had to get the kids up for school, which is never a good morning. But um, I was making a cup of coffee, and I was like, why well, is Chris Rock slap and Will Smith about trending like what, what's going on I had a quick look at it and it's like oh, what is this and I think I even no. messaged you and I think I messaged Sarah and I was like well, I can out check out this <laughs> it's pretty mad it was kind um, of fun to just see in a way as well though but the, the good news from 2022 was that Covid was on the decline and we pretty much were getting back to normal and certainly by the end of 2022 apart from a few apart cases apart from China Apart from China, let's forget about that. They've actually gone the other way, haven't they? It's mad. But what, the rest what's, of the what's world. What's going on? With them? And, it, and, and, and in the UK, the advice now is if, you get, if you've got COVID, treat it like you would a bad cold or the flu, and you probably wouldn't go to work. You wouldn't go to the office oh. for a few days. Yeah. So do the same. You don't need to isolate anymore. There's no masks being enforced or anything like that. So, you know, I think in the next year or so, we'll, we will see it die out you know most people have had it now yeah, yeah. Um, at least once I know someone who's had it four times you know so it's just it's dying out now and, and that's and that was the good thing about 2022 I would say no yeah I think you know we are obviously getting stronger more immune to it I think we will there will obviously be variants but there's variants of flu all the time it's never one you never catch the same cold it's always a different variety of it <laughs> speaking like a true dad you never catch the same cold 
<laughs> that was 2022, kind of the news. Uh, let's move on to films, and then we'll go on to horror. All right. So, so cinema is back in full effect this year, wasn't it? Um, well, shit started opening up, so yes. Technically, we, well, well, basically, Bond. Bond was the big one, because that was put off for like a year, two years. Yeah, was that 22 or was that 21? Oh, I feel like I was 22. I, feel like, I think that was 21. Oh. Um, well, let's run through the top movies. Um, not all of them, but some of the top movies. Uh, I'll work backwards, um, so I'll just pick random ones that came out. So we had uh, Spider-Man. No Way Home was the ninth biggest film. Uh, obviously, Marvel were back. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was up there. The Elvis movie, which I know you you watched. Very good. Um, and we also had Lightyear, which was the Buzz Lightyear movie. I, uh, I quite enjoyed that too. Bullet Train, which you liked as well. Super good movie. Um, Thor Love and Thunder. Uh, yeah, the Bat- that was good. The, ba- the Batman. Um, uh, that's in that that list of those Blu-rays. That's over there. Yeah, I, I saw watch, that. Actually. Yeah. Um, we also had the Jurassic Park, third Jurassic Park movie from the new series. Yeah, uh, which that. I I haven't seen that. Um, I saw it and I don't remember it. Um... No. <laughs> Dot, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, and then the top two movies from 2022 number two was Black Panther Wakanda Forever <clears throat> which actually uh, just won a Golden Globe um, mm-hmm. and Angela Bassett for Best Actress mm-hmm. or Best Female Actor and number one movie who would have seen this come in you never would have if you'd have told me when this was announced this is coming out in 2022 the number one movie of 2022 was Top Gun Maverick oh right which I haven't seen but everyone tells me is incredible and I will be watching it soon. Yeah. Um, yeah, so strange films, like lots of sequels, Marvel back on the scene, but 2022, I feel like next year is going to be, or this year, 2023, is going to be a pretty good year for film. But I, th- I think, I think, like, <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm not any sort of fan of Top, Top Gun. I was about to say Top Gear, Top Gun. Um, and, but th- it was quite, like, obviously, that was back in the day the first one came out. That was a lot of people who were cinema goers. And then, obviously, <clears throat> the action stuff for the new audience. I think it pulled a lot of people into the cinemas again because a lot of people remember that time and that's when you used to go to cinema. And it's also coming out of COVID. We weren't allowed to sit together and stuff. So people were embracing going back to cinema. So then, also, something like Elvis coming out, which is like, obviously, Elvis is a hugely popular person as he is, was, is. Um, so that coming out as well, I think that made it because that was a very much a good cinema experience. I found it's a real good story you could get into, and it, because it's a, a, about a singer having that speaker system, that surround sound as well, made it incredible. You know, so I think it made it more of an event with some of these movies. So yeah, it sort of opened up, opened up cinema <coughs> again to the world. Yeah, <clears throat> I agree. I only went to the cinema a couple of times in 2022, really mainly to see sort of Marvel films. Oh, and I, did, I, did quite, I did quite a lot of flashback stuff with uh, Sarah. <clears throat> I did like, quite a lot of the classic films. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's good that they were doing that as well. Well, let's go through <clears throat> the horror films that came out in 2022, because that's why I built this time machine. Um, now, I know that 2020, 2022... What's that leaking say, from it over there? Don't, you don't need to worry about that. Oh, well, it tastes funny. Why have you to swell your mouth out with this immediately, please? Okay. Thank you. Now, it was a great year for horror, 2022, but I haven't seen many of these films <laughs> because I'm so far behind. So, I know that you've seen a lot of them, and I'm going to just kick things off with one that you didn't like very much, Nope. Jordan Peele's Nope came out in 2022. Oh, no, 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 I didn't. I didn't, I didn't mind that. Like Oh, you liked it. Okay, I don't good. mind Nope at all. I would um, happily watch that again, actually. I'm going to heavily rely on you for a lot of these because I, you've seen most of these and I haven't. Um, I thought Nope was quite a... Uh, I, because I was really... Us really fucked me off. I think it's good with him doing this. It's quite like a big kind of sci-fi type sort of movie about a spaceship and stuff. I thought it was quite a good different change for him a little bit and I thought well, that's a good, good direction actually and it makes me go what are you going to do next sort of thing um, do you know that he Jordan Peele secretly helped shape 
the script and some of the way the production went on Barbarian. He mm. advised the director, um, who knew him, knows him. And he's, mm. So it's if you think about it, there are elements of Jordan Peele mm. in Barbarian, which we'll come to. So X came out this year as well. Oh yeah, yeah, didn't like that. You didn't like it? No. Okay, uh, I've heard many good things I about it. Also, find, I didn't find anything new there for me. Many of these films I've heard good things about, such as Speak No Evil. I don't know. Smile. Yeah, not seen. I heard it's very good. Made a lot of people's top fives for the year. The one that everybody hated, the big one that everyone hated, was Halloween Ends. Yeah. Gav, sum this up for me in a, a sentence or two. <clears throat> I don't. I don't really want to. I just. I, I don't really want to go back there. I had such a disdain for it. Uh, I don't know. It just felt. It was a weird choice. Um, it was a different choice, but uh, it's not the right choice for uh, end to your trilogy of films. It's the wrong choice. I have no interest in watching it, but when it's free, and I get around to it someday, I'll stream it. But I'm not bothered about it. I don't. Yeah. If you take off the movie Halloween and it was just a movie about some guy called Corey then that's that movie it's I, uh, just weird it's a I, strange choice I heavily dislike the second one so uh, it's, it's a different imagine. movie it makes the second one look a lot better though another movie that came out this year straight to streaming which we both loved uh, was Prey a Predator sequel called Prey really good film really I good wanted film. to see it in the cinema uh, it's about a Native American lady who yeah. goes up against a predator. I'll have to watch it again at some point. Badass, really badass. Straight to Disney Plus, that was. Thank you, Disney Plus, for that. Um, Scream 5 surprised a lot of people. It was apparently very, very good. I did not like it. So much so that Scream 6 is coming out soon. Mm. I'm going to watch Scream 5 again, though, because I've watched them all with Jay. We've done, Sometimes we do these franchises. Um, so I'm going to do that with her and just to form my opinion again. But I didn't enjoy it, really. But I will give it another go because, you know, I do love Scream. I love the premise. Yeah. I love the first Scream. I, like, I really love the I first I like scream. some of the original cast and stuff. It's really hard not to be a Scream movie when you've had so many movies with these core members still coming back so then start going into territory when you're not as a bit oh. another sequel that dropped this year and I'm not a fan of the original is Terrifier 2 I've not seen them they're clowns aren't they Terrifier 1 I just didn't like it but um, I know a lot of people do uh, but Terrifier 2 is doing the rounds apparently it's very long apparently it's almost three hours long I don't really know of, a lot of clown and you're yawning at me just saying three hours long <laughs> there's a lot of clown at the menu I only recently saw it and it was brilliant Orphan First Kill again apparently it's very good lots of fun yeah it doesn't take itself very I'll seriously have it. you seen it no I'll get to it uh, Men so that was in Prime uh, in the UK um, I've not seen it I've I heard there's a quite disturbing bit at the end that's what I've heard. The end scene is very body horror. Yeah, I don't like body horror. I don't like yucky stuff. Bodies, bodies, bodies is another one that everybody's raving about. That came out in 2022. What is it about? Okay. Is it about bodies? I should imagine it's about bodies. Right. Hellraiser. Hellraiser. Everybody was, everybody was cross because oh, you've changed it into a woman. Why have you? Oh, whatever. I, I it's a great film. I didn't get involved in any of it. Don't we give a fuck? I watched the movie and the movie's good. The movie's good. The movie was good. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, that's cool. We both really enjoyed that. Apart from I don't know when he got on the bus and everyone was live streaming him. I loved that bit. That was the, my favourite scene because that was the I, only I think that's a Marmite ever scene. Had, you like it or you hate it. I I really loved the main character in it, like yeah, the man, cowboy I, kind of guy. Yeah, I kind of enjoyed the film. Okay. Uh, Dead Stream, which is a Shudder exclusive. Yeah, I see that. Good. Oh, excuse me. Oh, it's been a long, it's been a long one last night. I was very tired. <clears throat> um, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Actually, this dude that goes into a, a house and it's uh, it's your paranormal activity thing. It's a guy who's got a load of followers. 
and he goes into the house and sets up a load of cameras and it's supposed to be a really haunted house um, and he just stays there and um, things start to happen not bad it turns funny enough it kind of turns into almost if Evil Dead was a found footage movie Ooh. Um, if you wanted to see Evil Dead as a found footage movie you're kind of in the right territory with this great Disney Plus also gave us one called Fresh Which is apparently amazing. It's got um, the Winter Soldier in it. Yeah, not seen uh, it. Very good. Uh, what else have we got? We got um, Beast with Idris Elba. That was shit. Do really? not watch that film. Thumbs down. That's a load of fucking shit. Logic out the window. What are you I hear doing? That, I hear that um, <clears throat> there's a scene similar to Leslie Nielsen fist you know, fist fighting a bear. Yeah. Edgis Elba has a punch up with a lion. It's awful. I I highly recommend you do not watch this film. I love a good fucking animal movie of a giant tiger or some shit, but uh, give me, give me Dick Mass with his giant tiger going around the fucking Amsterdam any day to this shit. Brilliant. Dick Mass and his lion. Dick Mass and his lion and the uh, the wheelchair hunter. Uh, A movie that came out and was... Sadly, someone died who was very closely associated with the Studio 666. One of the Foo Fighters died. Yeah, I went to cinema and watched this, and it's a real good film. I really enjoyed it. Very, very 80s. Yeah, flashback. A lot of good film. things about really it. Really good film, actually. John Carpenter cameo. We got another Jeepers Creepers movie this year. Yeah, it shot just up the road for me. I don't know anything about it. It's supposed to be nothing to do with the actual thing. I think it's a different company or something. I don't know how they managed to do it. Apparently, really, really, really bad. Like, really bad. Why does, oh, that, really? why does that surprise me? Okay. Why does that even surprise me? The last two that I'll mention are Sissy. Yeah, I don't know. Which is apparently very good about bullying. And... One that I meant to watch this Christmas and I didn't get around to, but it'll be one I watch for next Christmas, and that's Violent Night. Yeah, and they they missed a trick. Why didn't they on Christmas Eve like release that for rent as well on streaming? What are they I, doing? I watched one called Christmas Bloody Christmas, which yeah, that was in twenty twenty two, and that was really good. That yeah, I didn't see it. script. What I would say about it, you'll like it because the script feels like a Tarantino script. The, the way the characters talk is so. It just pulls you in, and okay. then there's a robot Santa going. Oh, I'd check it next year. Same with I don't know. I'm gonna check next year because you can rent it now, but it's a bit, it's a bit late. I don't want to watch a Christmas movie now. Um, I did though watch Fat Man, which I thought was really decent. Yeah, that, that was 21, I think, wasn't it? That was Mel Gibson as Father Christmas. Yeah, that was really good film, and I actually recommend that. I um bought it actually. It was only for four pound on Amazon. Um, I really enjoyed that film. It's a weird. It's it's a weird one. It's basically if you live in a world where Santa just exists, that's a thing. It's not like a weird thing. Nobody really mentions it. He's just in the town, just doing his thing, and so he, he he ends up helping the government. I think making weapons or something with his uh, with his elves in a factory Amazing. to make some money on the side. It's it's a really strange movie, but if you just kind of take all that fantas- fantas- fantastical elements out of it and put it aside and just imagine it's real and that just happens. It's, it's kind of a cool movie. So someone's like, I want you, this little kid that pays uh, Goggins, Walter Goggins, like, says, like, I want you to uh, go and kill the fat man. He's like, Are you sure? He says, Yeah, because it's going to cost you. I'm like, okay, all right. And then he knows that he's off to go and kill Santa Claus. So it's. Yeah, watch it. <laughs> well, I'll do it for next, next Christmas. Year, yeah, I think we could cover it, to be honest with you. It's, uh, it's good enough, I think. Okay. Surprise, well, surprise. I thought it wasn't going to be that good, but I really quite enjoyed it. This has been the first time, team, where I've not been able to really contribute much because it's so fresh that I have barely seen any of the movies, the horror movies that were released this year. Yeah, that's because you're in, in deep in dad world now. There is that as well. I do have two 19-month-old children. Uh, um, I am not deep in dad world. You're suppose. not anymore. No. Um, yes. So, for me, what yeah. I would say, the, the takeaway out of the ones I've seen <laughs> were Barbarian and um, Prey. Yeah, um, I can't really hand on heart recommend anything else because I haven't seen much of the else. Well, so, from for you, Gav, what would you say? Give me two or three that you would say 
I'd recommend from that year? Uh, no, I can't because I can't remember all of them now. Okay, well, from what you said, yeah, um, I think you said that you you really enjoyed Prey as well. Yeah, um, you really enjoyed Hellraiser. Yep, and uh, you quite enjoyed Deadstream, but you really enjoyed Studio Six Six Six. Studio, yep, those three. That's good for me. Yep, and to avoid, you've told me I need to avoid uh, Beast. Beast, awful, awful. Um, and you there's think, another one. You think though, you're like. I'm going to enjoy this movie, definitely. How can I not enjoy this movie? It's going to be great. <sighs> J- Jamie's not going to be happy with you because she really, really liked Beast. I oh, think it was in her top ten. Oh, my the year. gosh. Okay, She cool. said, I think it was her that said she would triple bill it with um, the other Prey, the other movie called Prey about the lion and D- the Dick Mass one. Yeah. Um, and another animal one, but I can't remember what, what the other one was now. Burning? Burning bright. Uh, no, that was good, though, wasn't it? With the tiger in the house, yeah, that was really that. good. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I thought it was a terrible movie. Um, so yeah, but each to their own. Definitely. Well, there was twenty twenty two, guys. I'll put the time machine back in the shed now till next January when we yeah. review God knows what's going to happen this year. Um, <laughs> fuck knows who's going to die. What diseases? I, yeah, I know. Be, so uh, next year will be my birthday episode again. I'll be forty. Yeah. I'll, I'll be. I mean, twenty seven. <laughs> yeah, if you want um, it is a time machine we do go back if you want I, so, yeah. I, I can't believe in four years time right now I'm going to be celebrating at my 50th birthday party that's amazing I'll be there with you we'll be, oh, I'll be singing and dancing again, and I'll have my decks and I won't be drunk this time well uh, I've given up booze so I, I may not potentially be drunk what in four we'll years see. we'll see alright I'm, I'm still smoking crack every day though yeah it's too. hard it's really Moorish I like it yep. um, but yeah God knows where we'll be next year so guys when we speak to you in the next time team there may be another pandemic or disease zombie outbreak there could be another war we um, might be the last podcast going we could be the only two men left on the planet <laughs> and we've got to we need restart a woman. the population we, 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 could, we, we, we can't we need a woman to be able to start the population no we don't because we'll have AI and it would have like you said we'll be able Kelly to create Brooke. that's my <laughs> Kelly, Kelly Brook Kelly Brook Kelly LeBrock Kelly, Kelly Brook's uh, the British woman she 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 can she can be uh, in the reserves <laughs> Kelly LeBrock and Kelly Brook they're the two women that we have to repopulate the planet with we, we can make both of them <laughs> Right, get back in the time machine. Let's Press go. the button. Ready? <laughs> oh. For two million years in these subterranean caves, a creature of superhuman evil was entombed in a wall of ice, waiting to be free. Waiting to live again. Travel with us on a journey into a world where nightmare becomes reality. Are you telling me that an ape that lived two million years ago got onto that crate, killed the baggage man and put him in there? Yes, I am. It's alive. It must be. Travel with us. If you dare, on the Horror Express. search the train and find it, whatever it is, and destroy it. But if it's alive... I want this kept quiet. I don't want to panic the passengers. The malignant power of this creature is indestructible, transferring its force from mind to mind, from body body beast is not dead i put four bullets into him you think evil can be killed with bullets satan leaves 
The animal that you shot was only the host. It's alive in someone on this train. You saw his eyes. One look at them and you're dead. Anything that moves near that door, kill it. <laughs> Run, run for your life. Hide, but you can't escape. No one can stop the fury and the terror of the Horror Express. Express from 1972, while travelling on the Trans-Siberian Express, an anthropologist and his rival must contain the threat poised by former uh, by the former's cargo, a prehistoric ape, which is the host for life form that is absorbing the minds of the passengers and the crew. This is a great movie. This it feels like it should be a Hammer movie. It's not a Hammer movie. Where well, I don't know why, what happened, but it's a, it's a Spanish production. In fact, or is it Italian? Spanish, Spanish, I think. Spanish, yes. Christopher Lee. But it's just a bloody brilliant film. If you've not seen this, stop now. Go watch this. It's fucking on YouTube. You can watch it. You'll find a copy easily. Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing. Telly Savalas shows up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking weird. Um, this was the first one that Peter Cushing did after his wife died. Yeah, this, this is a whole thing with this because he wasn't going to do it and Christopher Lee persuaded him to do it and he actually, like, he's, he's later on in former life, he said that this his performance in this was something which he put a lot of his pain of what he's going through at the time is in this performance and stuff. Apparently, the Peter Cushing would have night terrors and screams because he was grieving for his wife because mm. he cared for her until she died. So Very Christopher Lee life. would go and sleep in his bed with him and cuddle him in his sleep, and they would sleep together because wow. they were such good, close friends. Mm. And Christopher Lee cared so much for Peter that he would go and get in his bed at night and sort of cuddle him and say, it's all right, don't worry, come on. And he would cry in his sleep and be screaming. And You would cuddle I, me, wouldn't you? I would. Oh. I feel like we're Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. Who am I? I'm Christopher Lee, I think. I think you're Peter Cushing. Christopher Lee's more of the menacing, like, not menacing, but the more. All right, you're the menacing one, and I'm the little Wait. dinky one. <laughs> you're a little dinky. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, dinker. I... I think that is such That's a amazing. sweet story, um, yeah. and you know, particularly back then, two grown men in a bed together. But they didn't. Christopher Lee's like wouldn't would be like fuck you, good sir. My friend is very scared, you know. And he, oh no, it went, yeah, no, not at all. They're both very traditional. Those two, though, like you know, it's just Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. Just those two names together, and they were in lots of movies together. And I'm so happy they didn't. They weren't egotistical or anything. They were just traditional old school British people just very much like let's do the job sir we stop for tea and then we carry on we make the movie we go out for some food ah oh, smoke some cigars drink some whiskey and go back learn our lines and we do it again but almost theatrically very professional in their, their manner and they just you can imagine that being not a fit, weird thing you know I lent I lent my father-in-law just before Christmas I lent him um, Christopher Lee's biography and uh, he read it all. And so over Christmas, good? I've not read. Is it good? It's very good. Yeah. So over the Christmas time, he would just talk to me about, you know, oh, I love the bit where he did this and the bit he did that. Because Christopher Lee, as you probably know, was a, a spy. You know, he worked for the secret. Um, the, it was the, the the faction of the government that he worked for was called the um, Ministry of Ungentlemanly Conduct. I have read some of that book. And he basically would just be an assassin in real life. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Like a proper James Bond type character. Yeah. He's even, Very he's even met, actually met a Rasputin. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking weird. What the fuck? You know. But yeah. But yeah, this is a, this is a, um, this is just a real fun movie. When I was a kid, I kind of, I never knew what the movie was. And it was like, it wasn't a hammer movie. I could never really figure it out. And there's this movie on a train and there's a monster and, 
it's like it was frozen and just all this shit it's super super cool and it's always such a fun movie and like it's really kind of dark and disturbing because it's, it's coming from a different uh a place a different country which have got their own l ways of showing darkness through their arts do you know what i mean everybody has their different ways of doing it but for me it's just like that. like i said those eyes going bright white and the blood trickling down it's just so spooky looking what hooks me uh, and hooked me when I first saw this many years ago was the location. I do love a movie set on a train. Oh, oh yeah, um, yeah. You know, it goes back to my love of Agatha Christie. Um, yeah, and this uh, feels early, like early could, Bond, Sean Connery stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This feels like it could be an Agatha Christie if she wrote a horror film, you know? Um, yeah, well, Murder on Orient Express now. Obviously, has Sean Connery, actually, the original. Yeah. Um, yeah, Bullet, uh, Bullet Train recently came out. There's a lot of yeah, films yeah. set on trains, you know. Seagal. <laughs> uh, Which is a pretty decent film, uh, 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 Under Siege 2. Yeah. It's a pretty good movie, you know. It yeah, is, it's all right. <laughs> the Snakes on a Train, I've not seen that one. Is there Snakes on a Train? Yeah, but I've not seen that one. Fuck it, oh, I, uh, I've seen Plane but not Train. I didn't Silent. even know there was. Yeah, I think so. Oh, good Lord. Um... Yes, this is a great film. If you haven't seen it, do check it out. Now, basically, the premise of this movie is uh, Christopher Lee has basically got this... Uh, uh, should, we, should we go through it? We yeah, let's it? go through it. Let's start. What, what I love... Well, let's talk about a few of the things I love um, that, that build this, that are sort of, you know, are the building blocks of this. Straight from the get-go, what you're about to say, building for this, the credits and just the way it looks at the beginning... Yep. That gives Very a certain, classy. like, you're going to get a certain movie with this. Just from the, you, you should know that almost from the credits a little bit. What sort of film is this? And much like, and I mentioned this earlier, Terror Train, another movie set on a train, whenever we need to cut away from something horrific or somebody screaming, they very cleverly will just cut in a choo of the whistle of the train. And we get a lot of, you know, exterior shots of a train just rattling along. And it's great. It just reminds you that, you know, these guys are just on this train going along in the middle of nowhere. They're isolated. It's a really lovely font on as well. I can't remember yeah, what it is now, but it's just it was really nice at the time. It's beautiful. And it's a great theme. And the theme It's tune, a very spaghetti western-like almost sounded, you know. What, the whistling? Yeah, just having the, that in there. Because that whistle then comes back, doesn't it? Uh, what was it? All the way through... I um, can't remember. Because it's the, one of the conductors that whistles that tune, and then later yeah. on, the monster whistles that tune. So it's a very, it's cool, and it's done very, very well. Um, I think I was it, about to start seeing whistling heart to heart theme tune. No, I don't know why. <laughs> so this starts off with China, nineteen oh six, and we. Start off bit off of narration, the narration, bit of narration yeah, of Christopher Lee. Oh, well, if anyone's going to narrate something, Christopher Lee, and he basically is narrating that him and his expedition found something in a cave, and he says the the, the following is based on true events. Of course, of course, it's based on true events, Christopher Lee. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and he talks about his expedition. Now, got to talk about this moustache, Gav. Oh, what, his moustache? Christopher Lee's moustache. It's a good moustache. It has got a mind of its own, almost. <laughs> At times, I'm Trying to like, contain it. it. I thought, is that the creature under his nose? No. Is it hiding in his moustache? <laughs> but they found something in the ice, potentially an ape, and they yeah, put it in a box. decided to bring it up back. Come on. Well... You know, I suppose, you know. yeah, if you discover like a new species, like, fuck me, let's get this back and figure out what this is. But yes, I guess they weren't thinking, didn't realise it was an alien. They'd never seen the thing. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. Yeah, this, 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 is, this is, even though it's not Hammer, it's a kind of Hammer version of the thing. It really is, um, because it's about something found in the ice. And, and, uh, and it basically a group of people contained in the frozen ice around them and uh, a monster taking them out. And they and don't know who it, who it is. And there's two plot points, which I'm not going to talk very, about now. I'll, very I'll much talk, sort of thing. I'll talk about the plot points as they come up, but there's two plot points in this which are incredibly original for the time. Um, and I just think, again, elevates this film above that. But we'll, we'll get to those plot points when we get to them. It's a very good movie. So Christopher Lee, it, we cut to him on the train, at the train station, and he's arguing 
with a with a railway guy. You know, you need to get this box on there. And they're like, well, hang on, we, we, who are you? Who do you think you are? And um, he's he's got a bit of clout, Christopher Lee. But then his buddy, Doctor Wells, Doctor Wells shows up, and that's Peter, Peter Cushing. Yeah. And they know each other. They've worked together before. While they're sort of arguing about getting this crate on the train, they've got these suspicious Chinese guys. Well, well, old Petey, he has a lady, lady doctor with him. Yeah. She, she's basically, she's basically squeezing nuts and taking no for an answer. She's a badass. She, she is. The way she's very affirmative, isn't she? But he talks to her like a piece. Of, she's a piece of shit. <laughs> Who, Peter Cushion? Yeah. Does he? Yeah, he's not very nice to her. He sort of orders her around quite a lot. Oh. Um, what, the actual, the, the, the grey-haired lady? Yeah. Oh, OK, I didn't really, because she's quite, she's quite tough to her own way. She, she thought... takes it. Oh, OK. She gives as good as she gets. She, no, she must have mad respect for him as a scientist, maybe. Yeah. Well, these suspicious Chinese guys, they know that whatever's in this box is something special, because there's guys, everyone's arguing about You're it. You're looking well shifty. So one of them sort of go over there in Chinese, go over there and uh, pick the lock on that. Yeah, yeah. So he goes over and he picks the lock. Yeah, yeah. Then, then that, that's it, kind of really. We don't see what happens, do we? Not for a while. But Peter goes and bribes the train, the the train guy. Oh, that's later on. That's way later on. That's why he's on on a train. He oh, okay. is that on the train? The, he bribes it? the uh, carriage guy. Yeah. Oh no 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 no! He, he also bribes him. Oh, does he? Yeah, he says, I've got a few friends in high places. I think you need to let my friends create onto the, the train here. Otherwise, uh, there'll be some, could potentially be some trouble for you. Oh, so I didn't miss this. I thought you meant when he bribes the guy later on to have a, a drill some holes in the bloody thing for me to have a look for Oh, me. yeah, no, that's oh, Jesus, that's that, not that, going that, far. But that's why he's done it, you see, because he wants, also wants to peek what's yeah, in that crate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's all in the plan. All of a sudden, there's a scream, and the Chinese guy picking the lock... It's dead. Yeah, and I love this scene here. It kind of, it's like an old Sherlock Holmes scene or something. It's a really busy train station. You've got the clouds and smoke from the train bellowing onto there. Loads of people, loads of noise, things going on, people doing stuff. I like this. And yeah, all of a sudden, there's a dead body. That's not cool. Well, this dead body has got completely white eyes with blood dripping out of the sockets. And we've got this Rasputin type character who kind of reminds me of like Robert De Niro. He looks a bit well, like Robert De Niro. He doesn't look a bit like Robert De Niro. He looks exactly like Robert De Niro. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I, yeah. I paused it and I said to Alice, who's that? She went, oh, Robert De Niro's in this. And then I pressed play and even with him talking in his accent, she was like, is that Robert De Niro? I said, it really isn't him, but it just looks exactly like him. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? It must be, he must be related to that guy from the end of Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. You know, everyone thought that Robert De Niro was in that as well at the very end. And he wasn't. But he's like this priest sort of guy in this. And um, not Robert De Niro, because he's not actually in this, this other guy. But he plays a really, uh, just the way he looks is just kind of like, not evil. He's just kind of scary looking almost. He's like, you just, there's a presence about him, you know? Yeah, he's very religious. <laughs> um... While all this is going on, though, Christopher Lee's clout shows up, and that is the army. And they're like, look, he's correct. He's very important. Don't worry about it. Professor Sir, he's Professor Sir Alexander Saxton is his full title. Let him on and let his crate on as well. But this, they do check out this dead guy, though, and this dead guy is now blind. He was yeah, a got... thief, and he's now blind. How could he be a blind thief? That's, no the, que that's the question here, really. And this is where the Robert De Niro monk prays over the dead guy. And, and he says, and he I says, sense an evil presence here. There's an unholy package and it should be destroyed. The devil, the devil. And he, right, he gets a bit of chalk and he draws a cross on the ground. And he says, you can draw a cross on anything that God is part of. But and then he then he tries to draw a cross on the box and the chalk doesn't work on the box, Cav. Yeah, I just thought it was whack chalk or it was wet or something. I don't really, I don't know. I didn't really notice it. Sorry, I thought it was just a thing. Well, Christopher Lee says, sleight of hand or a simple magician's trick. Yeah, I know. Later on, because they discussed it, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, that was a thing. Yeah. But they get on the train. Everybody's on the train now. So, whoo hoo hoo choo-choo. Thomas is going to be getting going soon. Exciting stuff. 
what's in the box it's just fossils nothing for you to worry about chris and peter peter's very interested it what, is what a sort fossil of fossils, it, it is a fossil in a way but it's a, an actual life form fossil that's the thing well peter this is the only bit of well there's a couple of bits of tension between peter and christopher because peter's very curious and he says come on good man tell me you know what's in here and he says nothing that you need to be concerned about it's my fossil and stay away from it. It's interesting. You know these guys have met each other before. It's like Indy when he goes out into the world uh, treasure hunting and stuff and he comes across people, oh, it's you again, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're on the train and Pete, Pete old, um, not Pete at all, old Lee, Christopher Lee's package does a little bit of a growl. And he, uh, he does open it slightly and he looks in and the, the thing is slightly defrosting a bit. I know, they got the ice is melting. Obviously, he knows it's going to defrost, but surely they'd have thought more into it, because what if that stinks to, to fuck? The ice is going to melt. There's going to be a stink. <laughs> in <Wow. here. laughs> We meet our character, the Countess, and her dog. And she is it's pretty special. Do you agree? Um, yeah, uh, just very quickly going back to you know when Lee Lee's like oh it's black magic and all that sort of magical stuff. Jim, one thing he says he says it's yoga. He does. He says uh, yoga. Just... Yoga is the cause of that. How did is how it... did stretching cause that? He's very um, naive because this is 1906. It's hilarious yoga. Like you did some stretching and that does that. Like oh, yeah. Yes, the Countess. Did you fancy her? Then is that why you get all funny about it? Yeah. And a dog... <laughs> I don't feel disappointed by it. It's all yeah. right, you can. And her dog is very scared of whatever is in the crate. Yeah. And then she flirts so much with Christopher Lee. She says, oh, you're British. And he says, that's correct. And she's like, oh, He's we, big, Poli big, we tall... Polish women love the British men. Big, tall, handsome Christopher Mustachio. Lee with that voice. And he's probably got to come with a bit of wealth. Yeah. Even if he is a bit sensible. Well, they, they kind of flirt with each other. Um, Turn on fun. your side, dear. And then roll over. You know, can you imagine him in bed? Why? Okay, I believe it's time for doggy style now, my yeah, dear. I'm really serious. <laughs> I just get my buddy who can do the Christopher Lee voice for us. So he did it on episode 100. Get him to um, do this. Can you just do a little, little sex scene for it for Christopher Lee? <laughs> Christ. Well, Christopher Lee finds a man playing chess. Uh, who comes back into it later on and the man asks about the chalk and says how do you think he did that and this he's, racist he's, he's an wow. engineer and scientist this guy well, he, well he, he's an engineer but he's interested in scientists and likes to keep up on the magazines he knows a little bit about some stuff and he says you know to Christopher Lee how do you explain the chalk then if if you don't think that box is evil yeah, how did says, the chalk he says yoga it was yoga it's amazing isn't it yoga did it and this is the next bit where uh, Pete, old Pete, uh, oh, good old Pete Cushion, he, d he bribes the train guy to have a little drill into the crate. I want to have a little look. Come on. But he does it in such a polite Peter Cushion way. He's like, if, uh, you know, you happened to drill a hole in the crate and How take How would you explain hole take drilled a little peek in? It's not just a, it's, that's such a elaborate thing. To, it's not that elaborate. It's just a messy thing to leave behind. But the baggage man's like, yeah, right, I'll do that for you. You give me some money, I'll... Uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll do that for you later Everyone's on. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Very funny. Um, a woman asks Peter Cushion for help. A crying lady. She brought, she comes into his carriage. He's cock-blocked to shit by Christopher Lee. Well, he's in his... So let's set the scene. Peter Cushion's on his own. He's in a carriage. Lady walks in. Can I help you? She's a beautiful lady, crying, she I need got your no, help. She's got nowhere to stay. Can I stay with you? And he's like, well, yes, of course he can. He's fantastic. In walk six foot four, Christopher Lee. I'm taking the top bunk. And he says, no, no, dear sir. Look, I've got the ticket. He says, that's 640A and it's 640B. I'm up there. You're down here. And then the lady's like, maybe there's room and she's for like, all she's three like, of us. And he's like, hey, oh, I saw this out. I saw this out. And he's just he's like, no, no, you're not getting out of this. So, yeah. Well, but the lady's like, maybe there's room for the, There's a way that all three of us could stay in this room. And it's like, hang on a minute. This could be good, Pete, if you and Chris want to. She's gobbling her way through the evening. Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. Gobbling her way through the evening. Okay, <laughs> now. I need to compose myself after that comment. Um, so Lee, Lee I was about to say Lee, slips, but Lee jumps up into the top bunk. Yep. And they, Pete and his new lady ain't got nowhere to go, so, you know. I think they go for dinner, don't they? The train guy doesn't take out the drill. He, 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 he does a drill. He takes out a hinge. He's like, what are you doing? You're even worse than just drilling holes in it. You're taking the hinges out of the door. I know. And uh, it's basically the door for the top half of it where you can sort of see the face. And he does this. What does he see, Dan? He looks in and he sees, like, a, a, a skull, like a weird ape skull. And he thinks, oh, that's a bit weird. He turns around. And while he's turned around, his hairy hand reaches out. And it sort of grabs around and it picks up. It sort of picks up different things until it finds something it can pick the lock with, a, a screw. Because it knew how to pick locks because it had just um, killed and drained the pick lock who, of on the train station yeah, earlier. Yeah, the Chinese lock picker. Bloody hell, I couldn't say that. Yeah. Yep. So it knew that. It's well spotted there. I didn't really think about that. That's good. Sarah spotted it, to be fair. That's, that's good. Um, and when the, when the baggage man turns back around... White eyes... There's these bright red, red eyes. Out the eyes. And uh, Monster's got these red lights going on for his eyes. Doing his and thing, isn't he? The, the baggage man's eyes bleed, uh, and then they turn white, and he appears to be dead. But then we hear the creature whistling the tune that the baggage man was whistling. Oh, I can't remember. Which is the tune from the beginning, um, which is cool that they they have that whistle carry on through yeah it's nice nice little touch and uh, the lady uh is next door is playing piano she stops and because she hears the whistling but they just think it's possibly the train guard from earlier yeah that's the countess and the count um no it's an ancient alien monster from the ice whistling a tune. only if you knew I'm off to kill some people now. <laughs> <laughs> I've already killed a Chinese guy and a baggage man. <laughs> <laughs> That's his little song. They called though to um, the carriage um, uh, and asked if they know where the baggage man is. This Christopher Lee and Peter Cushion called there by the kind of what is he? He's a he's a he's a, an inspector. Yeah, he's kind of like the top dog on the train, isn't he? He's like almost a, like, like a train cop. That's what it feels like. I don't really know what he, he's... And he's got a group of men underneath him. But anyway, yeah. he's sort of in charge a little bit. He's not wearing the same uniform as the other guys are. And he sort of said, he said he called the mayor and says, look, we found a fucking dead body. You know, what did you say to him? When did you last see him? You guys here, it's your, your thing, it's open. It's like, what's going on? What's in here? What's going on? Chris and Lee's a bit like, what the fuck? Like, that's what, and he looks into it and stuff. And what, of course, they look into it. And what they find is is the uh, baggage handler like, in, yeah. in place of where the monster was inside the crate. And Christopher Lee's like, I don't understand how this has happened. And Peter Cushion says, <laughs> oh, my dear man, I I probably should admit to you that uh, I was a bit, a bit curious about what was in there, so I, I bribed him to just have a peek inside for me. Mm. But they realise and... that the creature is now alive, half a man probably, half, you, half creature, whatever the fuck it is, and it's wandering around the train. So there's an ancient ape. This is not good. Wandering around the train, this... and it's already killed this guy. Yeah, how, do you, how does it sneak around for a start? I know. Well, they tell him you need to open the box, and Christopher Lee says, absolutely not, I'm not going to open the box. See how good this is. Each person it kills, it drains them, and that's why the brains come out smooth. It drains all of their knowledge. So each person, so drained a thief, a, tr a baggage handler... Each time it kills, it drains all their knowledge. Imagine if it just went around the world there, if it'd be the most knowledgeable thing in the world. You'd go up to, like, a kung fu expert and take their knowledge. Then you'd go up to, like... Everybody, everything. Yeah. You could do everything. You could be a mu the best musician in the world, businessman. You could be, like, the most powerful person in the world. Do you want to be an ancient ice ape? Nah, sounds like a lot of work. OK. Fuck that. Well, I love this moment because they, they they pull a gun on Christopher Lee, this cop, and he says, like, you need to open this crate immediately. Give me the key. So he pulls the key out of his pocket and then he just goes... and tosses it out the window. Mm. 
almost daring the guy like you, you can't shoot me I'm Professor Sir Alexander Saxton you're not going to shoot me so then they start trying to smash the crate open um, and that's where they find the dead body inside and he says but this is part eight part man it's two million years old um, how can this thing be wandering around how can it just get up and walk around and he's ordered to be locked up Christopher Lee lock him up yep because they suspect him of I don't know what smuggling a two million year old I don't ape. I don't know what really he's, I don't really know what they could, but I guess makes sense but now they've got to search for this monster yeah, so the army are on their way, searching their way around the train. The monster evades them, because now and again you see a little door open and a hairy hand pop out. He's in just... the kids' room. He goes point. in the kids' room, doesn't he? Hmm. Is he going to eat the children? Yeah, no, but doesn't he? No, he doesn't. Uh, he kills a guard, though. He does, and another guard hears this. Um, it's a really scary face that this creature's got. When it goes in the kids' room and it's sort of looking at the kids sleeping, it's like... If I was that kid and I woke up and I saw that, I'd be like, "Yeah, I'd scream." Absolutely, I'd scream for ice cream. Um, they find the guard's body and they know that he's killed again. And Peter and the sto- so Peter's making his moves because this stowaway lady is now taking her to dinner in the in the dinner carriage. Don't fill yourself up too much, dear. Just chatting away to her and. Uh, the chess man comes over, the, the engineer, and says, oh, can I sit with you guys? Well, not really. I'm trying to hit on this, <laughs> this woman at the moment. It's just, just like I'm getting coke blocks left, right, and centre. It's like, Christopher Lee's already done the job. I brought her to dinner, and now you're coming over here talking about <sighs> fucking chalk and engineering. Like, what, what do you want? Well, a fish is brought over, and this fish's eye... Is this, trig- is this an actual something. thing, then? This is, an, I presume, and this is a thing. Well, I don't know. I've never boiled an eyeball, but Chris, Chris, Peter Cushion sees the fish's eyes white. Well, do fish's eyes go white from being boiled? I don't eat seafood, so I don't know. I don't really. I eat fish fingers, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really Does the that same. Count? <laughs> it's not the same as a, a boiled fish. But he realises that the reason people's eyes are turning white is potentially because their brains are being boiled. Yeah. Mm. Because this fish is boiled, etc., etc., so he's like, "Oh shit!" So this means like more of this, and they start to understand. Very clever, really. They start to accumulate all their thoughts together and their ideas, and they start to understand how this monster is working. Well, we then get, and I said this during the relic, and I'll say this again now. I love a good autopsy scene. You do. And we've got an autopsy, and Christopher Lee, um, and by, by the way, Christopher Lee and the Countess are having a chat and they get to know each other a little bit. She says, well, tell me about your box of bones. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. She wants to know about his box of bones. Um, but back to the autopsy. Cutting into the skull. Is it, Peter it's Cushion. Seems quite graphic. Seems a little bit more graphic than the hammer, I think, maybe. He's sawing the top of this guy's head off. <laughs> he's really going for it. <laughs> <laughs> he's really getting into it. Little Peter Sleeves Cushion. Sleeves rolled up, a little sweat, pulling out his hanky, wiping his he's, brow. He's only a tiny little man. And he he really is. Takes the top of this guy's head off with a saw. It takes him a while, but he gets there. And inside... The brain is got no wrinkles on it. It's not like Dave Batista's head. As the woman says, smooth as a baby's bottom as she rubs it. <laughs> she like, oh, does. God. She sort of pats it, and you can see it's a bit sort of wobbly, like a brain might be. And it's oh, like, oh, it looks smooth a membrane. Why oh. did she pat it? She I goes, don't know. Because that's what you do with a baby's bottom. A little pat. Oh. Smooth as a baby's bottom. Um, which means it's been drained, Gav. Drained of his knowledge. Because apparently, Peter Christian says all the wrinkles on the brain are because of all your memory. The science is bad. They're because of all the memories and things that you've absorbed over the years. I don't think that's scientifically accurate. I'm going to eat uh, your brain as feed on your knowledge. What's that thing from um, Planet Terror? Little kid says when he's at the uh, breakfast table. Oh, yeah. God, I can't remember what it is now. Yeah, I can't remember. But yeah, he does say something like that. Uh, so yeah, and they they have a look at the brain and they sort of start figuring it out. Really, uh, that the creature is is sort of sucking people's memories and thoughts and experiences, and knowledge. He's a sucker. The creature, as they leave, the creature then enters the room that's got the uh, the body in it, and it looks at the brain. 
He's a really good looking monster, by the way. It's great. It's really good. It's really? just a guy in a suit, but really good looking. Looks good, though. Yeah. Even now. While the monster is in there, sort of looking at the brain, thinking, oh, yeah, I did that. The the runaway lady, the stairway, enters. So the monster sort of backs into a little yeah, corner. She's going to crack the safe. And she isn't a stairway, is she? She's, she's a fucking like, tea leaf. She's an international fucking safe cracker. That's what she is, this woman. Yeah. Cheeky. And she's got a bit of cushion right around her little finger. She's told him a story. Oh, help me. And he's like, oh, my dear oh, lady. Oh, gobble. He's bought her dinner and everything. Cheeky he thinks hell. He's, he's going to get his end away with her, but... Right. She wants to crack a different type of safe. Yep. A real safe. Um, but while she's trying to steal something from the safe, she is face to face with old red eyed ancient alien ape who kills her. Yeah, and drains her knowledge. And now it can crack safes, it can pick locks, <clears throat> and it can handle handle baggage. Because <laughs> that's, that's what that guy could do. Yeah. Imagine that when he goes back to his planet. Do you think the monster? What if he picks up from Earth then? Um, I can pick a lock. I can handle baggage on a train. Well, do you think the monster when he does it and he whatever he knowledge he gets and if he only gets a certain because obviously he's going to know some stuff already, so it's only new stuff. So when he only finds a bit, he goes, "Fucking, well, you're a right waste of space, you were." Yeah. After the does he hands, have a little like... comment to himself on each time? Well, he might have gone. Oh, at least I've got a new whistle. Yeah. Yeah, well, I suppose I've got that out of it. I've got a new fucking... tune I can whistle now, but the rest of it was shit. What, does like he learn you're... everything, though? What if the guy's got, a, like, a kink? He likes to wear women's underwear while he it... wanks off. So yeah, does the probably... monster learn this? He'll probably know that, yeah. And he's like, oh, it's like, okay. it's like the risk of buying a sandwich from a supermarket. Occasionally you get one that's a bit shit, and you're like, well, that was a bit of a waste. Yeah, but I mean, like, he's learning different things. Weird stuff as well. Or is it just Can superpowers? You... What is it? It must be everything. My next note say horny Peter Cushing is worried about <laughs> about where the world because he's like suddenly he's like hang on a minute where's my potential <laughs> shag? Uh, <laughs> we're making him out to be just over his because he's such a gentle soul. I know, but he's we're really making into this right deviant. But he's really into this stairway lady, and he, he thinks you know he's got his. He really he thinks he's going to get somewhere with her, I think. <laughs> so he goes looking for her, um, and he's grabbed by the ape. Yeah. Well, the colonel steps in, shoots the uh, the ape. It's got one eye left. It shoots him in the eye. It shoots the ape in the eye, and it's got one eye left. And with that one eye, it tries to sort of affect the colonel. Yeah. Yeah. But because it's only got one eye, it only does half a job. Yeah. Which we find out a bit later on when we yeah. see the colonel's yeah, it's hairy kind of, ham. It's almost like a, a zombie thing where it's starting to slowly take more effect almost or something. It's, it's, yeah, it's weird. I think because it's got one eye, it's just but, it, its but, effect takes longer. But the chief passes out anyway, the old chief inspector. He does. And he wakes up in the bed. Mm. Uh, Chris Christopher Lee shows up and he's very cross. Um, and Chris chats to him. And he says, you know, the, the woman was an international jewel thief an international safe cracker um and she had a smooth brain as well because we we also cracked her head open with a saw and had a look while you a lot's happened while you've been asleep actually <laughs> feet cushions like i'm cracking heads open left right and center <laughs> i didn't expect this when i came on this train journey i thought i was, gonna get, to, I thought I was gonna get some pussy uh, and now i'm sawing people's heads open fuck's sake but a man's got to do what a man's got to do yeah. it's, it's a different type of head um <laughs> And this is where the theory is introduced that they're they're able this creature is able to suck out your memory and your knowledge through your eyes. Yeah. And the monk we cut to the monk now, Robert De Niro monk. Yeah. And he says Let's call him Bobby Monk. Bobby Monkhouse. Bob Monkhouse. It's called Bob Monkhouse. British comedian from the 70s and 80s for anyone who yeah. remembers. And he says the creature's evil. What did he um, host? Um, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, is that Ted Rogers? No, uh, that was Ted Rogers. He hosted... God, I can't even remember what he hosted now. Bob Monk hosts... Fuck knows. <laughs> <laughs> that was what it was called. Bob Monk hosts. Hi, Bob Monk hosts. Welcome to Fuck knows. <laughs> fuck knows. <laughs> 
Anyway, the, the monk claims that they've got the devil on the train, a demon, the e- pure evil, something unholy. Yeah. So we know we know that already, but the monk's just sort of solidifying that. The autopsy then on the creature, they remove the eye from the creature and they get a little bit of liquid out of the eyeball. Now, this is, this is one of the two plot points that I, I love. I love that this science clearly isn't right, but I love that in 1972 when this film was made, they just thought this was a really good bit of science. So the liquid is taken out of the eye, and apparently if I take some liquid out of my eye gap <laughs> yeah. and put it in a, in a microscope, I can see the last memory that oh, I saw before I, I died. I don't think that they think this is... I don't think they're saying it's a plausible thing. I think they're more intelligent than that. I think that they're just particularly this one but it is a bit nonsense, though. <laughs> but I love it. And what they do is they put the liquid under there and they Good Lord, look! And he looks at the it's microscope. the last thing the monster saw! And it's Christopher Lee holding a gun with the colonel next to him. And that's the last thing the creature saw before it got shot. Yeah. And I just love it. It's like a little snapshot. But they start to find out, and they look, and they see they say dinosaurs. <laughs> this is my favourite. And, and I'm not, honestly, I love this film. I'm not dissing it at all. But I love, they go, right, let's keep zooming out on the microscope. Oh, look, there's dinosaurs. And then they keep zooming out and zooming out and zooming out. And then the countess comes in. And she says, what are you guys looking at? And he's like, well, and they explain it to her. And he goes, hang on a minute. I've zoomed out loads. And I can see something that looks like the planet Earth from space. Yeah. This thing's come from another dimension, another um, planet. And they realise it's an alien. And that's what I love. An alien. I never saw it coming when I first saw this. I was like blown away that this was an alien. I know. It's, it's so the thing. It really it is. is. The thing. Um, apparently. Um, the thing on a train. It was investigated for plagiarism because it's so similar to Who Goes There, which is the original story that they then turned into The Thing from Another World and then The Thing. Right. So they it was investigated for plagiarism a little bit. Right. Um, but, you know, it, and this came out before The Thing, so it would have only really copied the book Who Goes There. But it, it didn't copy it. It just so happened to just be a very similar story. Yeah. Um, Priest thinks that, oh, uh, Bob Monkhouse thinks it's the Eye of Satan. <laughs> He walks in. He's just walked in in the middle of them. You know, there's an all top. There's this eight with half a head, and the monks just walked in and got right. What's, what are you looking at? What are you, you doing? Just, this is like, fuck I, off. This is the eye of Satan, and he starts quoting the Bible to them. But he steals it though, and runs off of it. And just like every movie that's set on a train, we get a moment now where they go into a tunnel. It's always good. I love it because everything goes out. You don't know how long you're going to be in this tunnel. Is Seagal going to take out the bad guys in this tunnel? Yep. Is Jamie Lee Curtis going to finally kill that man going in a mask? Is James Bond going to fly in with a helicopter? Or fight the man with the metal teeth? Yeah. We don't know. It's all, it always happens in a tunnel on a train. I love it. But when, the, when they come out of the tunnel, the monk and the eye are gone. Mm-hmm. Robert De Niro has stolen the eye. Yeah. And he's run off with it. Bob What's Monkhouse. he going to do with it? Oh, Bobby Monkhouse. So everyone goes looking for him. Uh, the monk is hiding with the eyeball yeah. whilst everyone's sort of faffing around, looking around. And the colonel secretly has a hairy hand. A bit like Sex Machine on Dust Till Dawn. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 totally. Or he's, or he's just been masturbating loads and his palm is hairy. Uh, and he gets red eyes, and he kills Miss Jones. Yeah. But the monk sees all of this, and he he's, he goes up to the colonel, and he says, "Here's the eye. I I will worship you. I will do whatever it is you need." And the the colonel says, "Well, first of all, burn that eye." Yeah. So he does. He burns it. Burns the evidence. And he's like, oh. and he doesn't really want to know Robert De Niro initially. He sort of thinks he's a bit annoying. But later on, Robert De Niro does convince him enough. It's a bit like um. Johan from Ghostbusters 2 following Vigo around doing what he you know he want, he knows he's going to get great power out of it eventually but so I, I find really interesting though that the monster sort of says to well the the the, um, the police chief who's basically the monster sort of says to him uh, he said old Bob De Niro Monkhouse says to him like kill me um, uh, and you know drain me and he says there's nothing in your head I want is that yep. a diss to religion? 
I don't know. It's basically a diss of some I kind, feel isn't it? like it's a science against religion in that comment. It's very, it's a good point, and you could well be onto something there. He's an alien I, coming from those. Like, fuck you, fuck you, religion. I don't need that knowledge. No he's got knowledge from millions of years of living in on another yeah, planet. He, yeah, know, yeah. He's he knows a, how to handle baggage. He's not. So I think it's a diss to religion. You know. It's interesting. That's a very good point, actually. Well, the whole train is panicking, um, and no one, they've decided no one's allowed to get off the train now until they find out. So no stopping at any stations. Um, we're going to keep going until we, we get this resolved and we, we capture the creature and kill it. <laughs> the old uh, uh, monster, who is now the chief, goes and kills the old radio guy. Yep. Poor radio guy. Poor radio dude. He's like the coffee cops from The Relic. Yeah. Didn't deserve it. No. Um... So the train isn't going to... It's just going to keep going. There's going to be... You know, no one's going to be able to radio in and say the train isn't stopping at the station. So this is your, this is like in the thing when you could do your test, your blood test. They're now thinking, we can test the eyes. How do they test the eyes? Yeah, well, they're thinking it's turning the lights off, aren't they? Or do they do that later on? First of all, how do they test the eyes first of all? That's what I'm asking you. How do they test the eyes? Um, oh... I know they just, that they, they later just, on think that they should um, uh, uh, turn the lights off, and it would the eyes would be glowing or something like that. That's right. Well, they check to see who's got white eyes, basically. That's it first of all. But then they realise later on, oh, we should have just fucking turned the lights off. That's the best way we could have done it. Yeah, they're checking for white eyes. So it is like the you know, I, I've actually written thing blood test scene because it is very much like that. Yeah. And they discuss Peter um, and Chris discuss basically. This is a virus. This is an infection. That's how we got. That's how it is. We got to treat it like that. And we need to sort of whoever whoever's carrying it is. We need to find them and we need to kill it. Therefore, killing the infection. So yeah. that's kind of the plan, really. Here, all of a sudden, like the fucking blue, Telly Savalas turns up. Well, we, well, <laughs> um, we've got at the next station coming up. Even though the train's not been told to stop, we've got Telly Savalas like kind of taking over. Now he's like he is. Who is he in this? He's like a Russian sheriff badass. And he's been told that there's been a murder on this train coming up, so they're there to actually investigate. So he's he's kind of the cops. But he's of. also dressed like a wrestler from WWF in 1983. <laughs> I can imagine him wrestling the Ultimate Warrior. And he's just walking around with this Russian accent giving everybody what for well, he's get, it's always troops saying just the train guy at the station and they're waiting for his train to turn up and um, and the guard's like you know you can't it, well, it's not going to be stopped he says you're fucking stopping that train and it, it has to get stopped for some reason I don't know how he does that for him well he's he's a very high ranking captain you know yeah um, also, to, to get on uh, so that's what happens so the chief isn't really happy with this obviously he's actually the fucking monster nobody knows that of so task but that's the difference between the thing in John Carpenter's the thing we don't know who it is in this we know who it is yeah um, and Peter says no the colonel says to Christopher Lee what do you think is behind all of this and yeah. he says an alien straight up she's an alien Telly Savalas. Yeah. That's what this is. Um, um, the, 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 the chief guy, the monster, he actually goes to see that scientist who's the one who's the practicing scientist, who's the engineer, and talks to him about gravity in space. He says, what do you know about gravity in space? And he wants, because he wants to see if he knows some knowledge that he can steal. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't, he, he takes a little bit, but not enough, so he kills him. He's a prime candidate, though, because he's quite a clever bloke, and he's very good at chess, so... Yeah, take no, he's brain. a clever guy. He obviously gets to take stuff from me, absolutely. At engineer, point, it's good to be an engineer. At one point, Christopher Lee, well, Daddy Pig from uh, Peppa Pig is a, a, an engineer, a structural <laughs> engineer. <laughs> yeah, you can tell what you watched in the days. Yeah. He's All a right, structural right. engineer. Well, what you need to do now is take him to Peppa Pig World. Well, not yet. Get him down there. I relate to Daddy Pig. Um, So... At one point, somebody accuses, they say to Christopher Lee, how do we know you're not the monster? And he says, a monster? Good Lord, I'm British. How dare you? Yeah. I monster, we're British. That. So good. Absolutely good. So the the monk now decides that he's the colonel's sidekick. 
and the the the, the uh, alien colonel's like, yeah, right, that's fine. I love the fact Christopher Lee has managed to draw this incredible picture from what he saw, which was of the Earth from the eye. Where, where, where has he got this picture? He actually must have drawn it. Also, it's incredible. Can we talk? Can we talk about the dinosaurs? Why is it that the memory of the last thing it saw is a photograph of Christopher Lee holding a gun but then the memory of the dinosaurs is just a crude child's drawing of dinosaurs in a colouring book it looks like okay. is that what it's all? is that what dinosaurs really look like I don't know maybe they could have just taken a snippet from a Ray Harryhausen film and used that yeah I don't know well anyway um, there's some they say it's weird... alive and someone on this train and there's a weird subplot now where the Countess and the Count are transporting some steel. Really, like, pure steel that is heat resistant. And you can basically use it to build a spaceship if you wanted. So that is what the creature wants. Yeah, and being an engineer, he needed all that knowledge. And he basically reveals, to the, I think, to the monk, he says... What happened was, millions of years ago, me and my mates came to Earth. And uh, they all fucked off and left me here. And I wasn't supposed to stay behind, but I've been living... I froze myself in the ice, and I've moved from person to person to person to person. And now I want to build a spaceship and go back to them and tell them everything I've found, you know. They're yeah. probably wondering where I am, to be honest with you. Yeah. So, probably time for me to go home. That is kind of the plot. It's quite cool that it speaks to him like that. Um, uh, we, we've we've got Kojak on, have we? Already? Yeah, he's already on there. He's, he's wandering around shouting at people with his bald head. Well, he starts saying, shouting at everybody. everyone's under, you're under arrest. What? Everybody? Everybody's really outraged because they're all very British. And they say, you can't do this. And he says, I can do what I want. I'm Telly Zavallis. And I'm here to get the killer. Um, and he and demands... Then he, then he has a whip and he whips, the, whips Robert De Niro. And then he punches Christopher Lee in the face. You don't punch Christopher Lee in the face, Gav. No. Not even if you tell him No. He threatens people. Yeah, he, he whips the monk. Um... Monk whipper. <laughs> I've seen that. That video. <laughs> um, and, yeah, he whips the monk because he tried to protect the colonel. The colonel gets stabbed and shot. Yeah. So the hairy hand colonel, the alien. And the monk takes on the infection he does he says come i laughed at this line come into me satan <laughs> yeah yeah i thought oh hello <laughs> yeah i think so but it's very that. it's very exorcist isn't it come into me come into me absolutely when he takes when he takes it from reagan um yeah really cool so now the monk and the monk already looked quite gnarly but now he's got bright red eyes it's quite a good look isn't it it looks great yeah, yeah, yeah. They turn the um, light. Lee turns the lights out. He does indeed. Um, and the eyes are glowing. Yeah. Um, Telly Savalas gets killed. Yep. Uh, the monk. He, he wasn't in it for long. He wasn't. He literally showed up. He's quite a presence though, because I remember the movie, and I always remember Kojak in it. Yeah, well, he's on the poster. That's the funny thing. Oh, yeah. He's he's in it for ten minutes, honestly. Yeah. Because yeah. he shows up, he shouts at a few people, then he gets on the train, whips the monk, punches Christopher Lee, and then he gets, gets killed. killed. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Um, so the monk then enters the countess's carriage and kills some. Um... <laughs> oh yeah, I've got a priest wants Satan to come in him. He kills the the, the count. And the he cowboy. does. He does come next into note, me. and he does. <laughs> You've made this very sexual. Yep. Uh, so the Christopher Lee has a strobe light. This is what they use now, and this is the one thing that can make the creature sort of weak. A strobe light. So you can go <laughs> you to don't a disco. Don't go to disco tech. Fucking hell! Imagine that you're at the disco, like, no. uh, oh my god, that one's an alien. Or you'd know you'd be in the cinema, and it'd go. The next film contains scenes with flashing lights. The one guy that gets and walks out, you're like, he hasn't got epilepsy. Yeah. He's an alien. Yeah. Go get him. Yeah. Get him now. Um. So yeah, uh, all the this I love this bit now because the there's a power that um 
we don't know about that yet that the alien's about to show us that he can do and he basically reveals I'm from another galaxy watch this and he he sends like he, we talked about energy weirdly when you die in the in the entry to this episode and he says we're all made of energy and I can control that energy watch this and he reanimates every corpse that he's killed Oh, so good all of a sudden so, we've got zombies I know you said we've got alien ancient alien apes and now we've got zombies and loads of these white eyed zombies which are creepy as anything and some of them have got some of their heads missing because they've been autopsied and they're just oh stumbling. it's so good they're stumbling along all these train guys baggage handler they're all there um yeah, and they start zombie in their way down the train. He doesn't even say that. He does say before that happens, uh, you know, if you let me go, I can teach you to end pain and hunger. He does. And that's like, wow. He says, basically, I'll give you all the knowledge in the world, you know. And he knows that they need it, sort of thing. Uh, Chris really fights the um, blind... Because they're blind zombies, don't forget, as well. I know, blind zombies. It's Just fucking creepy as shit. <laughs> Christopher Lee fights them, of course, with a sword. Is Dave Triffitt so blind? You know, What's that? Well, the bright light that came comes out blinds everybody. Two of the blind dead, isn't it? All those movies, we yeah. love those. Great movies. Um, they realise it's that classic. We've got to disconnect the train carriage. That's what we got to do because all the zombies are on one carriage. I know. I did think he's just gonna let that go. It was, obviously, it's good though what happens. But I was at first, like, he can't just let that go. And Peter's trying to disconnect it, but he's not strong enough until Christopher Lee arrives. And then with one swift arm movement, he just disconnects the carriage. The train goes flying over the edge with all the zombies in it, explodes into a million pieces. And uh, luckily, their carriage, with all the goodies in it, just manages to just stop just in time. Yeah. Then, <laughs> then there's a shot of planet Earth at the end. There you go. So, okay. I'd zoom out on planet Earth and that's it. Meaning we're being watched and those guys could come back any time to find their... Because he won't be dead, that alien. He'll just go back in the ice now, the energy that yeah. he said he is. He'll just go into the ice, just like the thing. Yeah. So it don't bother for him. Now, before we talk about our th thoughts and feelings on this, very quickly, you did something fantastic yesterday and revealed to me that there's an episode of the new creep show series the brand new shudder creep show series which is episode five of season two starring justin long and it's called night of the living late show and you listeners are probably wondering what the hell i'm talking about if you haven't seen this and what happens in this is there's a Justin Long's character invents a type of virtual reality where you can actually go into a film uh, and he's a horror film fan, particularly a fan of the Romero movies and the Horror Express, because he went to see it with his dad when he was little, and he goes into the Horror Express. And this episode of The Creep Show, 45 minutes long, is basically just Justin Long interacting with all the characters from the, the yeah. Horror Express. Done really, really well. It's so good. And then you find out the reason that he's doing this is because when he was a kid, he fell in love with the Countess, who... I can completely understand that. So his whole, whole core is he wants to cheat on his wife by going into this virtual reality and getting with the Countess in the Horror Express. What a weird plot point for a ser an episode of The Creep Show. Yep. But also, amazing. So thank you, Gav, for that, recommending that. So, guys, it's on Shudder if you've got it. If, if you've never watched any of the other episodes, it doesn't matter if you watch them in order or not. Just jump straight to episode five of season two. It's called Night of the Living Late Show. And if you're a fan of the Horror Express, watch that because it's almost like a bit of a weird meta sequel to it. It's really weird. It's good, though. Really good. But going back to the Horror Express from 1972. Thoughts? Love it. Absolutely love it. It's got everything in it that we love. Yeah. It feels like a Hammer film, so it's got the Hammer elements. It's a proper horror story, you know? Yeah, but it's not just horror, it's sci it's science fiction as oh, well. Oh, yeah, it's got a lot of stuff going on. The aliens, the zombies as well. Yeah. It's got some great characters in it. It's got some funny moments in it. Like I said, Peter Cushing is definitely trying to get with this safe cracker. He doesn't realise that she's just taking him for a ride, Locked literally. everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, it's a massive thumbs up. It's such a great 
old time early 70s just everything is prim and proper in it if you like your agatha christie's and your mysteries if you like your science fiction your aliens if you like a bit of zombies well, that's if you what, like Christopher that, Lee. i think yeah that's why i like it i think it's contained mystery element it's, you know the same as the thing it's even got a bit of the snow sort of stuff going on outside which you like but do you know what there's someone in the room oh <gasps> He's wearing a birthday hat. I know. That's Bill it, though, Murray. which is the worst thing. It's his little birthday suit he's in. What? He told me he'd be wearing his birthday suit. Ugh. Can you put the hat down there, please, Bill? Wash your hands first. Bill, put the hat... That's it, put it down there. There we go. He's, he's moved the hat down in front of his uh, Peter Venkman now. So, yeah. Right, well, Bill, if you're ready... Yeah. To tell us, yeah, you ready? Okay, here we go, then. Get ready for it, Bill. Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. World of the Strange. The birthday world of the Strange. The birthday world of the Strange. So, it's me today, doing this, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Um, basically, we've got three different things. Now, I've gone for three things found in the ice. <gasps> of recent, though, this is recent stuff. It's one of them vanilla ice. You got to, no, okay, or ice tea or ice cube. <laughs> you got to remember. Imagine if that was it. <laughs> you got the three things. Well, you got to remember now, with the world getting a bit warmer. That ice is melting. Oh, the ice is gonna melt. The ice is definitely gonna melt, and that is the that is the problem with uh, things going on. But let's get into the first one now. <clears throat> <clears throat> with these, you have different groups of people, scientists being out in remote places for long periods of time. So this first one. <clears throat> now this is in. In the middle of the Filchner Ron ice shelf, uh, a five hour flight from the nearest Antarctic station. Okay. Okay, it's quite far away. Um, so, this guy called James Smith, the British Antarctic Survey, uh, he was there for like three months of freezing temperatures, sleeping in a tent and eating like dehydrated food. Uh, the science itself was a hassle to study the history of the floating shelf. Um, so basically, they, they just wanted to study the shelf floor of the ocean. Yeah, because they'll be millions of years old, won't it, about down there? So they'll be really interested in what's down there. Yeah, and it's very hard to get to, obviously. So, so you know, they, they were like, right, so we need to get down there. They want to get the seafloor sediment, which, <clears throat> um, which is under... So, which was, yeah, it's locked under uh, half a mile of ice. Um, to, so, to get to it, Smith and his colleagues had to melt 20 tons of snow. Christ. To create like 20,000 litres of hot water, which they then pumped through a pipe, lowered down into a borehole. So, basically, just this, they just made a hole. And then they pumped this warm water down to it to keep it going and keep going. So, they make this sort of tunnel all the way through. Right, got you. That way they can send then like a, a, a rod through with a camera, a GoPro, and a, a, a little thing to collect specimens off the oh bed of the seafloor. <clears throat> so what happens is they started going down there and it took 20 hours to melt through the ice inch by inch and they finally pierced the shelf. So they lowered down this instrument to collect the sediment along with the GoPro camera, but it came back empty. So they tried once again and this time... It, it went down there because each trip down it and back took an hour so um, this time it went down there and as it got down to bottom the camera it kind of hit out like it looked like a rock and I'm like what the fuck's there a rock down here for like there's nothing what is the chance on the seabed this one rock from you know anywhere it's just here where we've drilled um, and then basically what they found was on this sea on this big massive rock was it must have I don't know how the rock got there but um, and they weren't sure either but there's like all the the film on that was like living microorganisms and stuff 
Yeah. And it's on there, so they go out to get samples from that, but that stuff's been there for years. But feeding and living down there in a place which should not be able to do that, and somehow with a stream of water coming through a certain way, it was managed to do that. Really crazy stuff. So it's not like a crazy thing, it's not like a crazy creature or something, it's not like the Horror Express. But even so, there, there was something living, there's an organism living down there which shouldn't really be able to survive. No. Because nothing's cracked that shelf for millions of years, probably. Yeah, exactly. Whoa, okay, okay. But nobody got face bitten off or anything like that? No, no. Uh, the rock also had, it was lined with like wispy filaments, uh, perhaps a component of the bacterial mats, uh, or perhaps a particular, peculiar animal known as a hydroid. And let me guess, they brought that back to a lab and they're going to try and do something with it. Um, they would have brought it back and they would have just been checking it out, yeah, but I don't know, really know what more can be done with it. I don't think they'd grow it or anything. Uh, I don't they, know how long it would survive anyway, really. Is this quite recent then, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jesus, OK, we'll watch the news for whatever happens there, OK? All right, let's go to the second one. OK. Yeah, these these are all within the last two or three years, all three of okay. these. Um, so there's another expedition in Antarctic. Um, took to the waters for a 50-day journey across the Southern Ocean and beyond the ice continent earlier this year, in fact. On board, uh, uh, well, it would have been last year, on board New Zealand's uh, research vessel, uh, the RV Tanguru, or whatever that is, an international team used a state-of-the-art technology to scan the seabed. Uh, imaging systems allowed scientists to capture fascinating geomages like they've never seen before. So this isn't really, um, oh, I suppose it is under the ice, but it's in the ocean as well, really, so it's not totally in the ice. Um, suddenly, the... the uh, um, the, uh, the abyssal plane reveals itself. It looks barren like the surface of Mars, but a closer look reveals that no one has ever witnessed in Antarctica at all. Because obviously, like I said, what's going on at the moment, we're starting to see more things of the world, which yeah. we, we could never see before, which is quite incredible, really. Because it also goes to show us how we all evolved and everything, you know, especially when you start finding fossils and whatnot. It's like peeling the layers back on the Earth, essentially. Yeah, totally. Um, they wanted a closer look of what uh, some of the marine life was. They sent down like a fishing net, and they found twelve buckets of mud and one single fish. Um, they brought up basically from right from the bottom. I don't know how far it was. It's very far down. And they brought it back up, and in amongst the mud, you can uh, there's pictures of this. So if I go back to the picture, I'll put it on the Facebook page of what they found. They cleaned off all the mud, and they f uh, things like there's like sea cucumber and stuff like that. But they found they found this really curious specimen uh, it, it has the shape features of like a teeth it jaws and the shape of a grill ra raker as well as counts of the vertebrae to determine what it is they now have no idea what specimen it is and the colour and pattern of the fins or nothing like they've never seen before and it's like this kind of weird it's about this big uh, you can't see obviously listeners Dan can <clears throat> um, about the size of an American football a six inch sub or something, okay. sub base sub or something, and it's kind of see through almost, and it kind of looks weird, kind of like a baby hippopotamus to the type sort of thing. It's such a weird, weird thing, but they found that. And that's a living creature. Yeah, yeah, and, and the specimen they don't know what that is. And it's see through. Kind of, yeah, it had bits of it, yeah, because it's obviously living like in the water and stuff, you know, it doesn't see daylight and whatnot. So it's not a fish either. No, I don't know what it is. Yeah. So, from what you've described to me, it sounds like you've described a jellyfish that's got bones. Yeah, kind of. Oh. Almost, it's really weird. Yeah, it's very much like what you just said, yeah. Oh, I'll find okay. a picture and put it up. Anyway, number three. God. <laughs> this is all right. You'll like this one, because we all love dinosaurs, don't we? Oh, we do. Doug McClaw. It's a dinosaur one. What we got? Remains of a giant sea monster that lived 205 million years ago have been found 9,000 feet above sea level in the Swiss Alps by a team of archaeologists. In the, up in the, in the mountains? Yeah. The okay. marine monster grew to a length of 65 foot and weighed 80 ton and it was identical, identified from fossils representing three individuals including teeth, ribs and vertebrae. The 205 million year old Ichiosaur 
was discovered in the Swiss Alps by a team from the University of Zurich who described the find as thrilling. Thrilling. Uh, lead author Dr. Martin Sander of the University of Bonn said, maybe there are more remains of the giant sea creature hidden beneath the glaciers. <laughs> They discovered teeth and vertebrae from a 65-foot-long, 80-ton ichiosaurus, and the tooth root was twice as wide as the previous record, which be belonged to another ichiosaur, which was 50 feet from nose to tail. Ichiosaurus was, uh, were a highly successful group of sea-going reptiles that became extinct around 90 million years ago. Wow! I believe the Ichthyosaurus is, you know, in the first Jurassic World movie, mm -hmm. the, when they, in the water, it's the one that eats the the shark, or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the whale, so it's pretty the fucking it big. Um, it it were uh, they appeared during the Jurassic, uh, reached their peak during the Jurassic, and they disappeared during the Cretaceous period. Often Bloody misidentified hell. as swimming as a swimming dinosaurs, these reptiles appeared before the first dinosaurs had emerged. They evolved from as yet un unidentified land reptile. They they evolved from a land reptile to that Christ. size. How? What reptile? You know, um, that moved back into the water. The huge animals which remained at the top of the food chain for millions of years, like millions of years. <laughs> Developed a streamlined fish like form but for built for speed. So I just calculate that one species had a cruising speed of twenty two miles per hour. The largest species of Ichiosaurus is thought to have grown to over twenty meters, sixty five foot length, like we said. Um uh, the largest complete Ichiosaurus fossil ever discovered at eleven feet was found to have a fetus still inside its womb. Whoa. Whoa. Scientists said in August 2017 that the incomplete uh, embryo was less than seven centimetres, so maybe this was 2017, um, uh, uh, long and consisted of preserved vertebrae of foreign ribs and a few other bones. There was evidence of the fetus still developing in the room when it died. The find added to evidence that it oh. gave birth to live, young, unlike egg-laying dinosaurs. <clears throat> so that that's crazy but yeah they're three things now there's nothing too crazy about them. they're not that world of strange really these are well I don't know the second one is a bit strange well yeah I think I might have seen a picture of that blob thing from that second one probably did when it, it was happened quite, it was quite a thing yeah because the guy's holding it on his bare hand mm. if I remember right and I remember thinking why would you touch that with your bare hand this yeah yeah that, that's exactly no it. It I'll see if I can find it while I'm talking to you what do you think about them then well I think the Ichthyosaurus one is incredible I didn't realise just how big they were no. um, I also didn't realise they were around for as long as they were so they were before the dinosaurs and almost after the dinosaurs which is crazy um, I think the middle one is the weirdest one the weird blob with a the, with the skeleton what the hell yeah um I know I've seen, um, as you say, like things because it's thawing out so much. They found like um, wolves and uh, wolf cubs and bears and things in caves, still with their fur on, haven't they? That have defrosted. Oh really? Yeah, and I, I do worry that they are going to try and do a Jurassic Park, and they're going to use DNA to reanimate or bring back these. Oh, it's just. It is weird, isn't it? It does. Yeah, it's it's just another thing to do with global warming, isn't it? Really? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I've got a picture of this thing here for you now. Yeah. Okay, just, no, this guy's wearing a glove holding it. Okay. Oh my lord, that creature is. <gasps> it's really see through, and you can really see. Oh my god! It looks like a toy. You know, like you buy it um, for kids. You buy like a big ball of slime, and inside it, there's like. A... Yeah, yeah. yeah creature it's like one of those well you don't need it when you're that sort of you don't need it you can be see through and stuff you get a lot of animals like in the sea like that well not animals but fish yeah for things whatever the fuck they are fuck knows but they're from the ice but that is world of strange today 
Wow, well, there, we, there we go. I very much enjoyed that. Good, good. It wasn't anything too weird, but, you know. So, Ooh. guys, global warming is creating little jelly hippos. <laughs> Recycle, is what we're saying. See, we don't want jelly hippos taking over the world. Bill, what do you think about that? Okay. Oh, he's shaking his jelly hippo at us. <laughs> Just take <laughs> us out, Bill. Come on, then you can Not get Bill. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of Next week, though, give me Ira. Hairless pets. Weird. And we're hey, back. We're back. We're back to say goodbye. We're back to say happy birthday one last time. Happy birthday, birthday to boy. me. Happy birthday. Have you, have you enjoyed your birthday episode? Yeah, we've got like six minutes and then it's the end of, end of my birthday. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's been good. Thanks very much. Thanks for listening, guys. Well, thanks for picking those two cracking films. Oh, yeah, no worries. Um, two films that, I, that sit proudly in my collection. I, and... I did have that other one that I was going to pick, when I? Um, the... Identity? No, that was that one, but then the other one was going to be a movie which I thought we should pick, but it's a bit full-on, where the monsters go around raping women to death. It's just a bit full-on, though, I thought. I don't know. The, the Incubus. Yeah, probably not one to celebrate your birthday with, really. No, but very good film. John Cassavetes. Check that out. Take it I, very I haven't seriously. seen it, but I, I will watch it. Yeah, it's on Plex. So. Amazing. Well, that was episode 130. That was Gav's birthday. That was the first one of 2023 as we enter our 10th year of podcasting now, which is crazy. Uh, we're going to be celebrating our 10-year anniversary by the end of this year. But... I know what you're all thinking. What is coming up next? What episodes have we got? What can we look forward to? Gav, I'm going to tell you now. Hey. So, the next episode is another patron pick. Already? Blimey. It goes round quick, doesn't it? Patron pick. <laughs> what is it? It's Don Collier. Yeah. yeah. Our patron has decided for us. <laughs> we will be covering the classic yeah. Toby Hooper Poltergeist. Oh, just picked it up on Blu-ray myself. There we go. And he's paired that up with the modern cult classic, Hereditary. Um, uh, cool. Very good. That one, you know. That's going to be a quite an interesting conversation on both, it's both departments. It's both involving a family, a child. In each family, something weird happens to them. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. Very excited for Poltergeist, especially. Um, episode 132, then, will be our Valentine's special. Nice. And as I spoke about in the last episode... Sexy. Sexy, sexy, Christian Ooh. Slater, Where? double bill. Oh, yeah. Very bad things. Great. And true romance. Cool. Excited to talk about true romance, especially yeah. there. Yeah, totally. And that means that episode 133 will be still celebrating in February. We will be celebrating, as we try to do every year, Women in Horror Month. Yeah. Which is February every year. So we have got two badass babes kicking butt. Two movies. One of them is The Hunt, which is quite a recent film in the last couple of years. Very good. Very good. And... Home Invasion with a twist. You're next. Cool. Very gory, very good. Lots yeah. of fun. Yeah. So that's what we got coming up for the next three episodes. That's taking pretty us cool. into, into February. But yeah, patron next. Nice. Patron pick. Exciting for that. <laughs> Let me do some admin and then we can wrap things up with a nice big birthday bow. Go you ready for that? Go okay. For well, we are the podcast on Wanted Hill. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We are a proud member of Legion Podcast Network. Uh, to visit, to find more about the network, go to legionpodcast.com. Um, you can go to Facebook. There's a Legion Podcast page. There's a podcast on Haunted Hill page, which is where we're very active. We've got a lovely community of people, all of our patrons, listeners, friends, family, all sort of chat to each other on there. It's been going almost 10 years now, like I say. So, uh, yeah, join us. Join us. Join Have us. a chat with us. You can message us directly or you can send us an email. Uh, it's the podcast on Haunted Hill at Outlook. Dot com if you want to drop us an email with suggestions, if you want to talk about being a patron or anything else 
tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and anything else that you want to say. Don't send nudes, though, please. Well. Okay, maybe send them to... I'll pass them on to Gav. Um, you can find us anywhere you're listening to us right now, but we're available pretty much any podcasting platform, Spotify, YouTube, Podknife, Apple Podcast Addict, anywhere there's a podcast you can use, you find us, just search for us, just Google us, Google us, baby. Uh, we're on Twitter, it's at Haunted Podcast, and we're on Instagram, the, pon- the podcast on Haunted Hill Insta. Also, we haven't talked about it in this episode, but we also have a produ- film production company called Deadbolt Films. Don't we, we do? Gav? Yeah, we do. We've done short films, we've done feature films, we have comic, we have several podcasts, including Gav's other po- podcast, which the is called... The High Strangeness Podcast is my dearest Sarah, talking about spooky dookie things. Um, the new episode we'll be doing soon is going to be talking about uh, time travel. But we've just done Gary Hydnick, a uh, uh, killer which uh, people don't really know of that much. But if you're into that sort of stuff, check it out. But it is pretty full on. I also do another show. Is it a good time to talk about that? A show with my buddy, our buddy, RJ <coughs> McCready. Oh, no, and RJ. And that's called Blame It on the Aliens podcast, where we cover generally conspiracy theories or urban legends or cryptids. Uh, and we most recently covered the Legend of the Thunderbirds, which is a giant, not the puppet show from the 60s. The Thunderbirds is a giant 20 foot wingspan bird yeah. that has been spotted flying over America yeah. um, several times. So we cover that, and that's that was a lot of fun. And for the episode coming after that, we will be covering Travis Walton. Oh, uh, of course. The alien abduction, Fire in the Sky. Fire in the Sky. So have a lot of fun. That'll be our 10th te- episode. Well done. So it's been going a little bit, but that's to celebrate. We thought we'd have a go on that one. So yeah, Deadbolt Films. Just go to deadboltfilms.com and find out more. There's also merch available. Uh, we're on YouTube. There's a YouTube channel, Deadbolt Films. Just search for that. Uh, there's a few uh, fun things to watch on there. Um, Deadbolt Films is on Instagram. It's just Deadbolt Films, all one word. And we're on Twitter at Deadbolt Films. And finally, thank you to our patrons. Thank you very much. Thank as you so always, much. it's uh, amazing. And uh, I totally want, appreciate it. If you want to become a patron, just go to Patreon and search for the podcast on Haunted Hill. If you can't find the link, message me or go on the Facebook page. I will point you in the direction. But of course, we're not asking you to do that. You don't have to do that. But if you want to sponsor us in a way and be, become a patron for as little as a pound or a dollar a month or as much as you want, a million pounds, that'd be fantastic. Either way, it all helps to keep the show ticking over. It helps us to rent some of those or buy some of those more obscure films. Um, it also helps to get the merch produced, headsets, microphones, all that kind of things, Think little things. It all helps out. Uh, if you become a patron, you will get a free T-shirt in a choice of three colours of and your size. I will be posting uh, a T-shirt out very soon. I do apologise. I just realised and making myself a note now to post a T-shirt. And that is your T-shirt, Don. It is. You are going to be getting that. We are, it's winging its way to you now. You'll get if you become a patron, you get that T-shirt of your choice colour uh, in your size, and you also add get added to the list and the rotation where you get to pick two films for us to cover and tell us why you want us to cover them. You can write as much or as little as you want about why you pick those films. Yep. And it's very exciting. And we're doing a patron pick roughly every three episodes. So every third episode should be a patron pick. Yeah, totally. Uh, there we go. And as always, I want to thank our patrons by name because we love you so much and we appreciate what you do. So thank you to... Don Collier, our next patrons pick. Also, thank you to Jamie Jenkins, Kevin S. Fife, Sarah Kay, Rachel, RJ McCready, and Lex Boo. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. So, 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 so much. We will have some more uh, random content of extra bits and bobs popping up here and there. Little mini podcasts and videos and things soon. And also, every Friday, we are issuing, reissuing our old shows one week at a time. Um, I just dropped episode 62, ready to be coming out this Friday, which was a Dario Argento episode where we covered Suspiria and Phenomena. So that will be being re-released to our patrons for them. If they've already heard it, they want to re-listen, or if you never heard it, if you're newer to the show, either way, you'll have that. And if you do become a patron, you can then go back 
and put out any of the old episodes and listen to them because you can't actually get them anywhere else. So yeah, that's kind of selective. Of you, you just well, you just can't. Doesn't they're just not up some of the first ones, and they're a bit rough around the edges. Um, but um, we we still cover some classic films. We do. We've covered a lot of films. We've been going for 130 episodes, so it's a lot going on. But there we go. That is the admin for the show, and uh, yeah. we thanked everybody. Oh, and thank, I thank, thank you. you. It's part. It's not a birthday no more. It's gone by. My birthday will be in three or four months, so right. be cool. I, I already have my films lined up. Uh, exciting. Tom Sizemore's porno. What else? Screech from Saved by the Bell's porno. <laughs> oh, God. They're about on the same footing, really, aren't they? I did see Tom Sizemore. I was like, oh, look, Tom's on IMDb and he's acting. I was like, how many, how many number? What do you reckon? Just a quick, quick guess how many films he's done. 80. I think it's 284. No way. Yeah, because he's making shit. Like it's no. cont- it looks like it's like last year, probably about six or seven movies Isn't came he out. Dead? It's no, all just I'm shit. sure he died. No, he's just making loads and loads of shit movies. You probably cost next to nothing to employ. Hang on a minute. I'm sure Tom Sizemore died. Or am I thinking of somebody else? I think it's somebody else because he's still look at just check, check his IMDb, his acting count. Tom Sizemore, American actor. Dead. Yeah, you're right. He's still alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bloody hell. Good on you. He's 61 years old. He is making shit. Jesus Christ. There's a lot in it. How many? Too many films. Too many. <laughs> Too many. Um, well, there we go. That was episode 130. Thank you again, everybody, you. for tuning in and supporting us and just being with us on this ride. Mm-hmm. Glad to get the time machine out again. Um, it's always, always good fun, and we'll do that again in a year's time. Yeah. Uh, as, as long as the world's still here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's a good night from Tom Sizemore's fake penis. It is a good night from a really big, scary beast monster. <laughs> That's no way to talk about yourself, Gav. Yeah. Uh, and it's a good night from Christopher Lee's moustache. It is. And it's a good night from uh, Kojak. Who loves you, baby? <laughs> With a squeaky, shiny head. Yeah. All right. Good night, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Good night, everybody. Good night, Gavin. Birthday boy. Thank you. Take care. Take Be care. safe, people. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill. We will be back again real soon. Oh!